What did a kid in your school do to get expelled? Dude smuggled a wine bottle. How the teachers found out? Well, the brass knuckles he was carrying in the backpack broke the bottle and spilled wine in the middle of the classroom. This is why you only commit one crime at a time. I live in a ruralish Irish town and our school was built next to a massive wheat farm. One day a kid bought in a plastic bottle filled with petrol and matches. He hopped over the fence at lunchtime and set the field on fire. Destroyed the farmer's entire plot. Apparently it was about 500k worth of crops. But he also served time. Was pretty wild. One girl I went to HS with stole some school letterhead and proceeded to make her own report cards all year. Super quiet girl. I had her pegged as the honor student type. I don't know if she got expelled, but I never saw her again. I had her pegged as the honor student type. So did her parents. He stole an autistic kid's backpack full of books, took a crap in it, zipped it shut, and shook it up. He then bragged about it to one of his friends so when autistic kid had his freak out it didn't take long for administration to figure out who done it. Okay that's just mean. Very weird kid in my year at the time came into school with huge amounts of hairspray in his hair. The amount where your hair eventually sticks like gel but without actually using any. Guy that sat behind him in one of our classes happened to be one of the worst behaved kids in the school and he proceeded to get out his lighter and light his hair on fire. It didn't go up like if it were oil but it definitely stayed alight long enough to see him running out the door with his hair smoking. Both kids were gone after that. Threw a chair at our pregnant teacher in year 5, 9 10 year old. I also went to his house to play because our mums were friends and he beat me up so badly, kicking my stomach in until I puked in the car ride home and my mum came running and screaming. I'm also a girl, so it's not like we were Audi boys play fighting. Never seen that kid since. Some kid in my elementary school got expelled for dropping fireworks through mail slot in the school front door, blowing the glass out of it. Elementary school. One of the special ed kids kept escaping the school, allegedly through a bathroom window, would strip down and try to play in traffic in front of the building. Chad. A kid escaped school on a Gordon food service truck during recess they found him hiding in the uncrustable sandwich box while unloading the truck when they got back to their little warehouse. Uncrustables are life. In the canyons near our housing, there was lots of old World War II ordnance from when it was a proving ground. Lots of people collected the mostly harmless dummy ordnance. However, some kids found a mortar round and it blew up while they were playing catch with it. Two of the three kids died, so the alarm went off to turn in whatever you had. They found some really impressive collections, so the fire department and army EOD came to our school to show us some examples of what we could come across. As we sat in the bleachers of the gym, this kid stands up holding what appeared to be a shiny aluminum softball and asked if it was anything. But the EOD guys froze and we all had to evacuate, turned out to be from a cluster bomb. Never seen that kid again. Two kids were dealing drugs out of their lockers. One had a locker upstairs and the other's locker was downstairs. Everyone who bought drugs knew the combinations. People were told which locker had their merch and when you had class on that floor you'd get a hall pass and stop by the locker. A teacher got suspicious of seeing multiple kids going to the same locker. I will never forget being in class and getting the lockdown announcement while drug dogs were brought in and seeing one of the kids flying down the hallway toward his locker. Should have used gym lockers. Problem is it would restrict buyers by sex. But if you really did have a significant customer base in the other sex. You could use gym lockers for one sex and regular lockers for the other. And cut down on foot traffic to any individual locker. This dumbass broke into someone's house. Stole their guns. Then got busted trying to sell them to an undercover cop. He got expelled and arrested. My brother got expelled for mooning the teacher in the middle of class. I almost did too. For figuring out how to open the console on our lockdown computers and running a command that made I'm Rick James. B pop up on every screen in the school during standardized tests. Okay, your prank is hilarious though. I bet that at least some of the teachers thought so, too, even if they couldn't admit it. Kid in my sister's class called in a bomb threat to the school from the school cafeteria payphone. This was in 1999 so before everyone had cell phones. He was arrested and expelled. 
kids in my high school did the same stupid crap, around the same time, too. One kid came into the school and shot a bunch of students with a BB gun. He was a pretty troubled kid, later on he ended up going to the same high school as me, did the same kind of stupid crap, dropped out in grade 11, and I didn't know what happened to him for many years. Recently though I found out he's gotten his act together by the sounds of it, owns his own construction company and dropped the drugs, seems to be doing alright. Unexpected ending. I am from the midwest. This was the mid 90s. A middle schooler went bird hunting over the weekend. He still had shotgun shells in his coat jacket on Monday, no weapon just the shells. When he got to school he realized the shells were there and immediately turned them into the principal. He was suspended from classes until the board made their decision and he was eventually expelled. A kid made an honest mistake, did the right thing to correct the mistake, and was punished to the maximum for it. This has to be the stupidest reason. Just shows that the schools do not value honesty as much as they say they do. He would poop in a bag and stick it in somebody's backpack. He did this twice. First time he got suspended and a warning. Second time he got expelled. This was in 9th grade. That's some crazy crap. Man. Be funny if they were his bullies though. He stole a butcher knife from the cafeteria kitchen and attacked a teacher with it. They tried to subdue him. This is the era before school resource officers school shootings. And someone pulled the fire alarm. We all evacuated the building. In the ensuing scuffle with the principal, he dropped the butcher knife but grabbed all the plastic knives and forks from the cafeteria. He ran outside to where we were standing and threw them at us. Since they were cheap plastic, nobody got hurt. He was eventually tackled by the gym teacher and principal then carted away in an ambulance. A kid never came back to school. The school also decided that banning plastic knives and forks would prevent this incident from happening again, so they replaced all plastic silverware with sporks, which is the real tragedy. The kid did get the mental help he needed and has gone on to be a productive member of society. A kid in my primary school who was a bully ended up getting expelled because he threatened to kill my older brother with a plastic knife. After 9-11 my school had a huge memorial and planted a remembrance tree. Some kid pee on it and ripped it up the next day. He can't melt steel beams. He crushed a canister of pepper spray with pliers until it exploded. They evacuated the entire school and shut down that wing of the school for 3 days until the city and school district cleared it safe for use. If I recall correctly it hospitalized one student for a few days and earned the guy some juvie time and hefty fines. That area of the school smelled like old fish and bleach 4 weeks afterwards. Released 500 crickets into our school cafeteria, then proceeded to sit back and watch the madness. Resource officer caught as many as he could and ended up putting in the perpetrator's car via a open window. He had the last laugh. Counter strike. Kids sprayed bear spray all over the boys bathroom. It spread through the halls and more than 20-30 people got it in their eyes and mouth and had trouble breathing. Including some of my best friends. Who had to go home cause they couldn't breathe. He could fart at will by sucking air into his butthole and then letting it rip. He once tried it under the shower after pee. Well it turns out that if you suck water with your butthole you end up shooting watery shit bums. We were laughing our asses off to this crap cannon until one guy went to tell the teacher and he had to go and clean it up. Oof this is a good one. One of the teachers in my high school was born without his right arm from elbow down. He was the new English teacher, pretty young good looking and whatnot. We also had another new female teacher come in that year who was quite attractive. If you've ever heard of the movie Teeth it's about this girl with teeth in her vagina that like eats things or whatever. Anyway, some kid photoshopped both of their faces onto the movie poster and made it say Mr. Didn't always have one arm. The picture got around quite fast. And I went to Catholic school and this was a big no no. The kid was super smart too. What a shame. Absolute mad lad. Beat up a girl apparently. That was the last reason why someone got expelled. Before that I've only heard from two cases where someone was expelled. A bombing shooting threat and threatening to kill someone and themselves if the other person doesn't want to date them. He targeted Jewish kids in school by removing their yamakas and biting their heads. After the fifth victim, the assailant was expelled. I don't know why the first four went unnoticed. 
Lem guess. He had an F in art. We were supposed to come up with a creative story for the basic assessment test that we were taking. His story was about killing several teachers. When I was in 3rd grade some kid got expelled for bringing knives to school for protection. He was a bit of a hothead. He never used them on anyone but all the kids knew he had one on him at all times. When he got caught a few weeks into it his parents were called in and apparently they were trying to justify the kid having the knives at school. Most kids never saw the kid after he went to the office that one day. I came back after a two week holiday I'd missed the last day before we broke up for Christmas to discover that a person in my friendship group had been catfished for nudes by this guy in the year above, who had then posted them on social media. He took a hockey stick to the school library on the last day of term, destroyed his laptop and broke his jaw and collarbone. Got expelled pretty quick after that, but the kid who posted the photos got no repercussion, even though it was actual child pornography. I'd call a broken jaw and collarbone some pretty serious repercussions. Small private school. Kid sprinted and jump kicked another kid into a door splitting his head open for some reason I can't even remember. But he was gone pretty quick after that. Sparta. 1. Fire extinguisher battle. HS. 2. Fox urine in the ventilation. HS. 3. Stood up on desk. Playing air guitar with pants and underwear at his ankles. Elementary. That third kid must be a legend. He was special needs but got zero tolerance because he made a series of drawings about taking over the school with fart bombs. That's BS man. Poor kid. He was an all around bully that nobody liked and was always getting into trouble. Final straw was that he was caught accessing someone else's grades and was making fun of the person for said grades. At lunchtime. One kid managed to sneak inside the school library and made all the computers go on Pornhub. Shortly after that, they wore a white mask and took out a water gun threatening to shoot the school if people don't bow down to him. I'd love to have seen that. When I was in high school a kid sprayed pepper spray in the school ventilation system. It was kind of a big deal because the school doesn't have any windows that open. The school had to be evacuated and I think we got to leave a few hours early. I knew the guy. Typical trash. He eventually got hooked on drugs. No idea what he's doing anymore. He would call our middle school making bomb threats back to back and we often had to stay on the bus or evacuate to a nearby church until school hours were over. A couple of guys yelled, the Germans are coming and went under the table during German class while the air raid alarm was going off for testing. Bruh. My friend left his BB gun and pocket knife in his backpack on accident. The police did a random search of certain classrooms that day and his room was picked. Quite frankly, when I found out, I was not surprised that he was expelled. What I was surprised about was that he didn't get expelled for marijuana possession or setting off fireworks in the middle of the amphitheater. On the latter, I was disappointed. In high school a gal decided to give her boyfriend a BJ behind the math building in the middle of the school day only to be discovered by a mentally handicapped student. Of course. Only the girl was expelled for it. A kid got high on M and stole a bus. He did a few donuts in the parking lot then drove away. Only to get it stuck in a ditch. So he walked back to the school to take a second bus to go pull the first bus out of the ditch. The police were waiting at the first bus when he got there. How'd he get away with the second bus WTF? Well, technically this does not count, because they were never caught, even though the police was called in to investigate. But this is some next level crap. So we have classrooms called temporary classrooms. I don't know if you have them in other countries, but it's small separate classrooms that were made out of a dense type of drywall. So during our official test period they store all the tests in one classroom. So these tests have been marked, but not revised and have therefore not gone through admin yet. So Monday we come back at school and during assembly with the entire school, which we had every day, and our headmaster is Piers Frick. He is genuinely a nice guys, 
but at this moment he's bright red and shivering with anger. Apparently a student snuck into the school and put a fire hose through a cracked window and flooded the whole classroom. A teacher later told us that the tests were literally adrift in the water. The classrooms sustained a crap load of water damage as well and, after no one came forward, the police started a vandalism investigation. All the appliances in the class were also ruined and the sum of the files of the teacher, to whom the class belonged, got damaged and she had to do everything over. They never found the culprits and used some of our assignment mark for the subjects which tests got completely destroyed. Also, our disciplinary teacher lived in a house adjoined to the school. He has sheep. Every year a group of matric students carry on the tradition of painting the school's roof and painting his sheep and letting them onto the school grounds. Each year they get suspended for a week. A group of guys also put silicone into the key slots in all the doors. The silicon dried overnight and we weren't able to get into our classrooms. They had to remove the doors completely. We got the whole morning off and he got suspended for a while, but left a legend. In 10th grade, 16 Y, someone set a wooden cupboard in our class on fire. The cupboard was burned down and that side of the class was black as heck. No one got caught and it was very mysterious. There were cigarette packets outside the window. The tube lights were removed and put under the desks. A kid and his friend egged the school from an airplane. It was crazy. The one guy's dad had a Cessna or something with a private strip in the middle of a field. One night they went to the egg farm next door, stole a bunch of eggs, then took off in the airplane in the middle of the night. Apparently they did manage to drop eggs around the school, but early in the morning the fog set in and they couldn't find their way back to the landing strip. They ended up flying very low around town, which post 9-11 freaked everybody out. One of the hotels was evacuated. Eventually they were arrested and expelled from school for it but I think it took a while to figure out what happened. Aerial bombardment. This one kid activated the fire alarm four times this one day, and the school had to be evacuated said times. This other kid got access to his class's grade book. He stole the book and lit it on fire I think. He got expelled. Some other guy destroyed every speaker in every classroom. Some other student kicked a ball in a teacher's face and broke her jaw on purpose. My school was fricked. Oh, oh, this was me. I got expelled from my charter middle school for being a witch. I was really into astrology and some people who didn't like me accused me of having a curse list. It was a list of kids who wanted me to read their palms and do tarot card readings for them. My mom was pee because she thought it was stupid that I was getting expelled on the word of 3 12 year olds and on the basis of witchcraft. Bronx Zoo Trip so girl decided that she would not only decide to shoplift $100 worth of merch from the gfit shop, but also kidnap a butterfly from the butterfly greenhouse in her backpack. She proceeded to kill the butterfly when she got home. Comma she proceeded to kill the butterfly when she got home. Like, why though? What are the bullies bullied from your school doing now? A few years ago, I read about a T.I. went to school with who was shot and killed in self defense by a store clerk he was robbing. That poor guy, I feel bad for him having to live with shooting a robber dead. One of ours is currently up on charges of criminal confinement, intimidation, and battery, so clearly the same thing they were doing in school 30 years ago. Isn't it strange that if no one deals with them at s young age they carry on their behavior as adults? Weird that. Last time I checked, he was arrested in our hometown for armed robbery and conspiracy to commit a felony. A couple of our bullies teamed up and decided to rob a local donut shop. Apparently, they committed some truly bumbling errors, and were caught immediately and sentenced. The skills required to push around classmates don't seem to translate into the retail sector. I had to look her up, but it looks like she's married, sells MLM, and is constantly posting things like, Girl, God is with you. I think that's worse than bullying. Years ago I ran into someone at a gas station who was pretty much a dong to me in high school. He is was a firefighter now. He actually apologized for being an butthole to me. I just shrugged it off like it was nothing. But all I could think about was that scene with Biscami and Billy Madison. Last I checked on Facebook a couple years ago, she is still a bully, we're not friends on FB, but she made public posts about wanting to beat another girl's butt, still dramatic and petty, even in our 30s, kinda sad honestly.
Bring in your 30s and still acting that way really is sad. My uncle is a guardian ward for the state. He gets assigned by the courts to be responsible for a person's affairs if a person is unable to care for themselves. He acts in their best interest. He asked if I knew a guy from my high school and inquired about him. I told him he was a bully, untrustworthy and on drugs at the time. He said, this makes sense as he was trying access his mother's money that was under his guardianship, since she was incapacitated. Unfortunately, it seems nothing's changed since high school. Me trying to weasel up a real whopper but still being half asleep, what a jerk. They all had children together straight out of school, then seemed to swap partners and have more children. Now there is a whole bunch of them who all hate each other because they're all dating each other's exes and all the kids have half siblings all over the place. There's about 8 ex bullies in this partner swap web and it's a mess. I still love watching all the Facebook drama it comes with though. LOL. Birds of a feather. He is a doctor now. Got a job as director at his parents hospital at the age of 26. Some people have it set for life. Then covid pandemic hit and it was business booming for private hospitals in India. So now they are building a bigger hospital. That's a way of life in India. You grease your way through a crappy med school and spawn crappy hospitals and get married to an equally crappy family and spawn little shitheads. You keep walking tall brother. Dead. Accidental suicide. He drank too much and had an argument with his missus. He went home and threatened to hang himself. Had a diabetic dip and accidentally took himself out. His GF found him the next day and had to ring his family on holiday. Now that's a story. My bully hung himself in year 9. The teacher instructed everyone to write some nice memories about him. I couldn't and ended up on after school detention. Where you guessed it, we had to write something about him. I wrote 5 pages double sided detailing everything he did to me for the last 7 years. I even named names of teachers and school administration who refused to do anything. I then handed it to the supervising teacher at detention, which made her cry. She marked me off for the remaining 2 weeks of detention I had received as she knew I wasn't bullshitting. No one writes 5 pages double sided with the amount of detail I had put into it and they're bullshitting. 34 years later I still feel nothing for this guy. I do not hate him, I just wonder what was going on in his life to be such a freaking butthole. M I bully hung himself in year 9. I just wonder what was going on in his life to be such a freaking butthole. Something pretty bad. Sorry he scarred you up on his way through it. My elementary school bully was shot right outside my window. I kid you not. Poor kid. He was only 17 when he died. I hold nothing against him and I wish his life weren't cut short so tragically. One was jailed or something similar for molestation. One moved because he got caught sending nudes to a furry girl. The rest are all sea kids that will never leave that crappy town. I haven't talked to him since I was 15. I'm 33 now, and I haven't seen him since I was 18. Out of curiosity, I googled him a couple years back. He's apparently married and has a kid, but I also found his Twitter feed which was filled with nothing but profanity laden tirades against sports teams, there was literally nothing else, and I found his LinkedIn page that said he was a shift manager at Starbucks, I actually think that's outdated, I know a lot of people who have very outdated LinkedIn pages, but I really do wonder, although frankly I don't care. Last time I saw him we ran into each other at a party, and he was sweating because I had a restraining order against him. I didn't really care as long as he left me alone, which he did rapidly. Incarcerated for assaulting his sister. Found a way to torture me to this day, being nowhere to be found online so I can't even have the satisfaction to know their lives crap ha ha. Frick them then and frick them now, life's better just moving on my friend. For reference, I graduated in 1987, one of the biggest bullies from school, who I lost touch with, and honestly didn't miss, ended up coming out as gay about 15 years ago, turns out denying who you really are makes someone pretty angry, he's really cool now. Recently moved back to my hometown and ran into one of the old bullies, after some rough years he's totally turned himself around and distanced himself from the other buttholes. Super nice guy now who's working hard to make something of himself. He apologized profusely for being a dong and actually wants to be friends. And I'm down for that. We actually have a lot in common. 
This guy tormented in any class I had with him. For no reason. He'd look for something, anything and focus everyone's attention on that as he made fun of me. In our 30s now, I have a good job, family. He works at the subway down the street from me. Nothing wrong with working at subway, but he didn't become the baller that he originally set out to be. Peaked in high school, grandfather by his mid 30s. He had a twin brother who was killed in a car accident. I've learned that life will cause these kind of folks more pain than I ever could. Well, my bully apparently passed away recently. We were best friends as kids, and then eventually he came to torment and demonize me. I hadn't thought of him in years until this post and googled. Sure enough he'd passed away, as much as I hated him for tormenting me so, really saddens me that someone so young died. The biggest bully douche meathead, think Biff Tannen, is running a successful IT company as well as a clothing brand for shoots and giggles. Shouldn't be too far from being a multi-millionaire now. The guy that he used to bully completely lost his mind to the point his parents got him locked in a mental hospital for some time and got a restraining order against him. It's sad as he was one of those borderline genius who'd do calculus and geometry for fun. And was a sweet kid. So yeah the whole PPL get what they deserve in life doesn't apply here. Luckily I didn't get bullied in school from like 13 onwards but one guy in my area was a complete dickhead. He used to bully and try start fights with me and a few friends, even knocked some of one of the guy's teeth out by sucker punching him. From like the age of 18 21 I never saw him until I was working in town one day and saw him, homeless and looking out of his mind on drugs. I'm 29 now and still see him every now and then on the street in town. I try give him some change every now and then, sometimes he recognizes me other times he doesn't. I feel bad for him. Died of a drug overdose. Left a young kid behind. I ran into him once. He worked at Subway. Once again he took my lunch money but at least I got a sandwich out of it. Last I heard one ran a M lab. Another became a dealer for the other person. One is a customer of theirs. And the other is an RN working in a nursing home with four kids and a deadbeat boyfriend husband. Not sure if they actually got married or not. As for me, I now live in another state and work in the music industry and I'm slowly working towards a career in graphic design and illustration. Keep up the good work. I looked up the worst for a few years ago. Two are dead, auto accident for one, cancer for the other. One is living on disability as he is losing larger and larger pieces of leg to diabetes. One manages a car repair place. In prison for murder, senseless crime against a defenseless elderly man that was trying to help him out, letting him do odd jobs and such. I realize this dude must have had an incredibly tough childhood as he was a bully from grade school until he dropped out in 11th grade but I really hope his butt never gets out. Even his mugshot is freaking scary. Depends. Rich kids bullies became rich adult bullies. They never learned bullying was not something they should do, so they continue to bully whoever is around. Poor kids bullies became unemployed got crappy jobs. Ironically, some of them are employed by rich bullies and now understand how being bullied feels. IDK and IDC, but I just knew of one that just works on his parents farm he inherited. As the bullied, I became what I wanted to be, a scientist. Got a family and a house and working on a car I want want next. You can finally get that Prius you always wanted. Mine is a caregiver who now posts lots of anti-bullying stuff fascinates me because she terrorized me to the point I changed schools. P.S. Frick you Marie. Stumbled across his social media in the early 10s. At the time it was all positive posts about getting off H. He was even interviewed in a local news story about former addicts. A few months later he was back in jail on drug related charges and has been since. Every now and then when I need to be put in a good mood I check his incarceration status online. Literally frick everyone giving you a hard time for this lol. You do you. There was one girl who was kinda awful to me. She is on welfare. Addicted to opiates. Several children from several deadbeat dads. Still living in our hometown. What I saw from her most recently was she entered into a wet t-shirt contest at a small town dive bar and with maybe 6-7 other women and they don't name who was last place, but she didn't place in the top 5. I saw some photos and they were jarringly trashy and hard to look at. 
Man, that is some freaking cask strength karma right there. Was bullied horribly in school, beaten up all the time, stabbed twice, now a published playwright, about to graduate from the best acting school in my country, bully is in prison, for stabbings. Recently had a guy start at my work and after a few days I recognized him as my high school bully. I didn't recognize him because he just seemed like an anxious wreck. Anytime we spoke I was like geez this guy is so unsure of himself and thought it was sad. Then I realized who it was. Because of being bullied I started MMA and ended up having quite a few fights and promised myself that if I ran into that guy I'd beat the frick out of him but when I was faced with him I took pity on him and didn't want to hurt him. Actually felt kind of healing to let that go after so long. I didn't even realize it was a weight I was holding. There really weren't bullies in my high school so the last time I was bullied was in middle school and I don't remember their names. One of these dudes I used to go to school with that always fricked with me is a dope fiend now. Dude asked me to help him out with crap and I hooked him up with food. I told him I'd only do it once and then he bothered me to help him out again and I told him no and he basically disowned me as a friend even though I helped him out once after he treated me like crap all throughout school. I think he's a dope fiend because he used to be fat and when he asked me for help he was much skinnier than the last time I saw him. No big loss for you with him not considering you a friend. They all were like friends but they started stealing each other stuff so one day I think one of them stole a phone and the other stabbed him Lmeo. Two bullies that I know of. First died while drunk driving in his early 20s. Second is a felon living in a trailer with a M habit. The one and only fight of my life was when I was a junior in high school. A senior wheel call K was intent on harassing me every single second she could, along with her 3 person crew. I took her abuse the entire year until one day, K approached me in the cafeteria before school, and started to draw her fist back to hit me. I beat the crap out of her and I never even knew I could fight. K ended up on H and then in prison for selling drugs. I hope they are all doing well. I hope that whatever caused them to need to do the things they did to others is no longer in their lives. I hope they are happy better people. I want to give them all a hug or a high five and tell them I'm happy to see them. And a little part of me wants to kick them square in the nuts and ask WTF was wrong with you. Died this past spring and my only regret is that I was never able to give him the kick and the balls he deserved a thousand times over. His obit says he lived to never cause harm to anyone and it makes me sick. The day I heard. My tears were a mix of happiness and relief and I don't give a frick how bad a person that makes me. A guy that used to bully me and act like hot crap moved to the city from our small town. And then got shot in the face for trying to act tough. My bully from what I've heard, is having legal issues for sexually harassing women. Meanwhile I'm working at Charles River Labs in the virology department. One of them finished interior design a few years ago. One of them finished med school a few days ago. They were really bullying me in the 9th grade, and a bit in the 10th. But we've became friends over the last 2 years of high school and kept in touch a bit. Good ending. What did school teach you that was blatantly false once you researched it on the internet? I had a second grade teacher tell me that the reason parachutes had holes in them was because without the holes the parachuters would never come down to earth. When I asked why parachuters didn't stay up there as long as they wanted and only cut out the hole when they wanted to come down, she drew a diagram on the board which showed how a parachuter could never reach the top of the parachute so they had to cut the holes beforehand. When I was in high school a science teacher tried to tell me that the sky was blue because the ocean was being reflected onto the sky. I insisted he was mistaken, but he insisted he knew better because he was the science teacher. Sigh. I thought the sky was blue because it was reflecting off the ocean. Dang it a heck. Not in school, but when I was about 9 I asked my dad why my uncle's Brazilian girlfriend had such a small bathing suit. He proceeded to tell me about the Brazilian fabric shortage of 84. I believed him for about 5 years. My father used to tell us ridiculous false information all the time. The catch was if we could catch one out and prove him wrong he'd give us a dollar. As we got older it would got a little less outrageous, but we'd still get that dollar if we could prove it. Looking back it was a good way to get us to think for ourselves. 
once a teacher wrote the incorrect then on the chalkboard. I believe I was in 4th grade. A bright student pointed the mistake out and the teacher replied back actually you can use either then or then in any case. They are interchangeable. It's recommended to always use then. However, that fricked me up for a long, long time. That's the worst one here, because it's so common and visible. Every paper you ever wrote had those words in it. My kindergarten teacher said that lightning split clouds in half, and thunder was when the clouds smashed back together. I took it seriously for 7 years. I wish that was true though. Sounds freaking awesome. The British won the second battle of Bunker Hill because they wore sunglasses, knowing that Washington would tell his troops not to fire until they saw the whites of their eyes. This came from my 7th grade history teacher. That's the greatest lie in this whole thread. Worst ever, that Hitler only targeted the Jews because his mother died after being operated on by a Jewish doctor. That gem came from my 10th grade history teacher. The Germans made lampshades out of Jews. Don't forget the bars of soap. When using web sources .org websites are more reliable than .coms, because .coms are trying to sell you something. Was probably true once upon a time. That tastabids corresponding to specific tastes are concentrated in quadrants around the tongue. It didn't actually dawn on me how idiotic this principle was until just a couple weeks ago. I remember doing an experiment in second grade to test these results and when the experiment didn't work we were told that we were doing it wrong. That the one who does the work gets the credit. We had a comparative religion project in 9th grade that the other two people refused to do on religious grounds. Which wound up with me researching. I think it was Shinto for two weeks. Turned it in, and mentioned that I had done it alone. Since the other two people in my group had actually told the teacher that we're not doing this. A week later, everyone in my group got an A on that dang thing. Despite two stroke three of the group doing nothing but dicking off in class for two weeks. Um, I had a teacher tell me that when Jewish children reach 12 years of age, their parents play that game trust with them where you fall backwards and let people catch you. The difference she said, was that the Jewish parents let their kids fall, to teach them not to trust anyone. Didn't really need the internet to know that one was BS. The Brontosaurus. In all fairness, I think most of the scientific world was duped by this one, but it was my favorite Dina growing up. I had a dream as a kid that I had a pet brontosaurus for a pet named Bronte. He lived in my backyard and gave me rides to school on his head. I was very disappointed trying to do research later that the brontosaurus is actually the bones of two different dinos that got incorrectly matched up. Shattered my kid dream. My honors biology teacher in 9th grade told me that daddy long legs spiders were incredibly poisonous, but were harmless because their fangs could not penetrate human skin. Later. I saw the Mythbusters episode where they each take turns being bitten by the daddy long legs with little or no effect. I thought this was true until just now. You can be anything you want if you work hard enough. Bulls. I cannot be a fighter pilot because I lack depth perception. You're not trying hard enough. Go invent robot eyes. In 4th grade I had this really freaking stupid teacher. We were going over what synonyms were in class, and she asked me to tell the class what a synonym for ridiculous was. I was a pretty smart kid and answered with ludicrous. For some reason she thought I was talking about the rapper, Ludicrous, and berated me for making fun of him. She then went on about how rude it was to insult a musician and that I might have offended someone in the class who liked him. She apparently didn't know that ludicrous was a word, whereas 9 year old me was well aware. We then began arguing over whether or not it was a real word, and she got really mad and called the principal in. He gave her a funny look and told her I was right. TL. DR. I had an argument with my 4th grade teacher over whether or not ludicrous was a word. Christopher Columbus proved the world was round. False, people knew it was round since Aristotle's time. Cued white scrut meme. The Greeks even knew the correct size. Columbus thought it was 30% smaller, just because he had a hunch or something, and would have gotten himself and his crew killed if that extra 30% didn't happen to contain two continents. In the first grade, our school was still using mimeograph machines to make copies of handouts. For those too young to remember, get off my lawn. 
Damn it. The printing quality of these machines was horrible. I misread a very blurry math problem. Something like 3 plus 4 equals as 3 4 equals and wrote minus 1 as the answer. When the problem was counted as wrong and argued with the teacher, I was told, by a mathematics teacher, there's no such thing as negative numbers. In 8th grade, right after 9-11, my teacher told us that our middle school could easily be the next terrorist target because terrorists go after places with high volumes of people. He then drew a diagram of the people jumping out of the towers. I should have known right then that he was a little messed up, but, instead, I spent most of the next few days in that class just imagining a plane crashing into the middle school in a small, suburban town in Connecticut. I believed that sucker because I was all, he's my teacher, why would he lie, he knows things, until I told my grandpa what he'd said and my grandpa was like, frick that guy, he's wrong. I like your grandpa. Most things about sex. My public high school sex ed course had various speakers and books that all had conflicting information regarding the effectiveness of different types of birth control. It seemed purposeful in order to give us false information in every direction, so we would be too scared to have any kind of sex whatsoever. For example, one speaker said that condoms were only 60% effective when used properly. A pamphlet said 75%. Our ancient textbook said something like 90%. Our worksheet said something like 96%. They also said that the only safe method of preventing pregnancy was abstinence. You're probably going to get pregnant no matter what you do since none of the above really work too well. So only have sex once or twice when you want to have children after your wedding. Now, normally girls weren't that too worried and they were going to teen mom it if something went awry. However, since I was born with a genetic disorder I needed correct information to prevent pregnancy, so I went to the interwebs. My cousins, homeschooled and super religious, did not have that luxury. They said Jesus would prevent them from getting pregnant. My aunt and uncle now have 5 grandchildren from teenage pregnancies. I am 24 and am planning my first pregnancy with my husband after we spent a year going through genetic counseling. I have female ketonuria, and it's pretty serious. If I do not plan a pregnancy and adhere to a very strict diet, the high amounts of phenylalanine in my blood will cause irreversible brain damage in the fetus, profound mental retardation in the fetus, fatal heart defects in the fetus, microcephaly, or pregnancy loss. I literally have no idea why people can't give teenagers the correct information when it comes to these things. I am very lucky to have had the forethought to research everything when I was a stupid teenager. Thanks for saving my children. Internet. Had a grade school teacher that told us that wind didn't affect aerodynamics. Then I had to learn how to calculate airspeed, and was completely fricked. History. All of history. As a phenomenal college professor of mine said it's the only subject that has to be completely retort in college. A missionary at my school told us we have an emotional connection to any pornster we fap to. Also there are only 4 days a month girls can get pregnant. I was told in second grade that Christopher Columbus was a nice guy who became friends with the natives. I got hit with a blast of truth later in life. I sad faced. If you ever use LSD, it will stay in your spinal fluid forever. And when you crack your back, it will give you a flashback. And if you ever try to join the military, they will give you a spinal tap. And upon discovery of the acid in your spine, imprison you for possession. While you don't exactly need the internet to know this, the librarian at my school was scolding me for exercising some senior privileges one day and let slip the sentence free thinking is bad. I mean, bro. She was a terrible librarian for saying that, and I apologize to you for that on behalf of the profession. I went to Catholic school. The crap I got taught about other religions alone. Man. My mom was a practicing Mormon and I remember a particularly vitriolic argument with my 10th grade religion teacher because she was spewing utter nonsense about Mormon theology. I'm staunchly exmo, but if you're gonna criticize them, at least be accurate. That the male mind thinks of sex every X amount of seconds. I was unaware that we as a society have already mastered mind reading. Okay, 
This is so ridiculous as to seem untrue, but unfortunately for us all, it is. I had a teacher in 6th grade teach the class that there is no gravity anywhere but earth and the sun isn't a star because if it was we would all burn up. I let the sun star thing go because how does one argue definition? I asked he how we were able to walk on the moon and she said they must have used cables. Never paid attention after that day. Yes. They both happened on the same day. Obviously I didn't need the internet to know this was bulls. This was the same teacher that showed a bunch of 6th graders a gash on her leg from where her mom allegedly tried to abort her. An English teacher once told us that picture and picture were homonyms. The same word that can mean two different things. She pronounced them both as picture. I tried arguing with her, but she wouldn't listen to me. The same teacher told us that any time a sentence has a comma, you put quotations around the last part. That if you make it to the end of 12th grade and graduate high school, you go to college and get more school. After you finish that, you will be very successful. You can get any job you want. That is a lie. Frick it, I had a science teacher that told us evolution wasn't real and that we should disregard that part of the book. I didn't need the internet for this one. I was told these are the best years of your life in the 7th grade. Apparently responding with then why shouldn't I go home and kill myself right now was not the proper thing to do. 1. You will have to use cursive every day of your life past the 5th grade. 2. The only way to succeed is to go to college. Also. Pretty much everything you learn in history class is filled with half-truths or is woefully incomplete. I think they might have also taught you incorrectly that past and past are interchangeable. I didn't even have to go onto the internet to find this out. Me, being a total dup, once tried to cook a couple of sausages in the microwave. This ended with black sausages, smoke alarms going off for 10 minutes, and blackened sausages. One week later, my science teacher tells the class that you can't burn food in the microwave. I put my hand up and told the class about my scenario. Idiot didn't know what to say. He's never forgotten to put water in his microwave noodles then. When I was in second grade I asked my teacher if the continents used to be connected, since that is what it looks like on a map. South America would fit perfectly into Africa's west coast for example. She said number. Asked my physics teacher in 5th grade if she believed in life after death and why. She said yes and explained it by saying that energy can never be destroyed and that everything is essentially energy. Now, I can not prove there isn't a life after this one. But her logic is flawed. It is a specific state of energy that creates my body and my mind. When my body rot away the energy I now consists of will still be present but in another form. It's like looking at a wooden house and insist that it's still a tree, and some other things. Columbus discovered America. I will one day need cursive. I won't always have access to a calculator of some sort. Eratosthenes was not even mentioned when talking about flat versus sphere earth. I thank Carl Sagan for my interest in science, because the schools I went to before the age of 16, the age when we first are allowed to customize our learning experience here in Sweden, serenely didn't inspire or teach me at all. I won't always have access to a calculator of some sort. To be fair, it's quite useful to be able to do simple arithmetic on the fly, though you can get by without it. My 7th grade teacher swore up and down that if the earth was an inch closer further away from the sun we'd all burn freeze to death. That be lied through her mustache. She was an English teacher. That you are a unique flower and to reach for your dreams. It's all fine and dandy, but the world is harsh. No one gives the slightest crap about you being a unique flower and your dream. It will not be given to you and you will have to fight tooth and nail to get there. One of my favorite quotes. You're unique, just like everyone else. A friend's teacher recently said that men have one less rib than women. He was a religion teacher so I guess it was understandable. My religious parents taught me that when I was young. Crazy didn't need the internet for these but, in 10th grade, my history teacher told me that there has never been a US president who was impeached. One quick flip through the book proved him wrong. In 11th grade, the same teacher told me that communist invented the color red. Invented a primary color. I'm imagining that inside this teacher's head is Karl Marx coloring in an apple with a red crayon. Nature. 1. Communism. 0. 
I am Texan and I was taught that Texas can secede from the Union whenever it wants. This is not true at all, although Rick Perry apparently believes it. That white men stormed into Africa, and dragged black men kicking and screaming from their tribal homes to sell as slaves. Actuality, white men purchased slaves from black slavers. To be fair, Europeans likely drove a massive increase in demand that seriously exacerbated an already existing problem. I was told that college classes would be much harder than high school, and that all the teachers would be much more strict. Turns out only some college classes were harder, and all the teachers treat you like an adult so the opposite was true. There are four oceans. Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia are places. Electrons swirl around the nucleus in a distinct ring shape. I crap you not, in CPT 101, in college no less, my teacher said, a good reason to to use Windows Update is because it will eventually upgrade you from the previous windows you were using to the latest version. Example, Windows XP to Windows 7 just on updates alone. I walked out of class that day. Once in the 6th grade my teacher drew a diagonal line on the whiteboard. He then asked the class is this line straight I answered yes like any intelligent 6th grader. You are wrong. He said, it's a diagonal line so I can't be straight. WTF. You can't pee with a boner. Yes I freaking can. It just launches out like a fire hose straight at the wall behind the toilet. That dropping out would end my academic employment potential. That teacher actually bullied me endlessly and was one of the many reasons I dropped out. She was a good Christian woman TM though, so it was all good. Had a teacher in 8th grade tell me that I might as well drop out, since I was going to amount to nothing anyway. What did your teacher do that you didn't realize until you were older was fricked up? My 4th grade teacher would stand in the bathroom door and watch us pee, because she said boys couldn't be trusted not to pee all over the walls and stuff. My 10th grade science teacher, a 60 year old man who was never married and didn't have many friends, would hang out with students after school and go to student parties. He would even buy us alcohol, tobacco and marijuana. He was fired for trying to date a 15 year old student. The music teacher at my elementary school did all kinds of creepy stuff. The one that stands out for me was that every Easter he would have us do the bunny hop. Except it mostly consisted of us standing still in a bunny hop pose while he came around to inspect our tails. We knew something wasn't right about him. But as kids we didn't really understand the full extent of the creepiness. It was just something to joke about. A bunch of parents finally complained to the school about him. And shortly afterward, he moved to a different school district. Supposedly because he would be able to make more money from private lessons there. Yep, he offered private and home music lessons. A friend of mine took lessons from him briefly, and apparently he insisted on absolute privacy while the lessons were going on. The door had to be closed and her parents weren't allowed to open it. My English teacher seemed like an ordinary guy to me in high school. Only now that I'm an adult I realize he was drunk in most lessons. I heard he was fired after a few years of my graduation. After the Columbine incident, schools started to have all sorts of procedures set up in case of an active shooter incident. At my high school, we were taught if an announcement was made over the PA of a certain fake faculty member was to report to the main office that was our cue to shelter in place and take shelter in the classrooms. Once a year we had the drill and every time it lasted about 5 minutes. We had a teacher though that was just a little bit off. I had him for a class during 8th period of my junior year and as time went on, the whole class kind of figured he just was a very serious, quirky kind man. On one particular day, about 10 minutes into class, he tells us all to get under our workstations because he heard the coded announcement. We all hid till the end of the period in our positions until the end of class bell rang. Our classroom was at the end of the school and it was generally a quiet outside so we never questioned whether this was a drill or not. This happened two more times during the year. We eventually just figured that he wanted to test us with his own drills. Looking back on it and by talking to some of my former classmates. Turns out he was faking active shooter drills to get the class to shut the frick up at the end of long days. As long as you guys knew they were drills. I find this kind of funny. 
When I was in elementary my teacher wanted to show us a video about fire safety, but accidentally opened the wrong file. The whole grade of students cluelessly stared at one man and three girls in a hotel room for a few seconds before the teacher closed it. Smokey says, only you can prevent backdoor S9. Grade 4 teacher spent days making our class memorize the lyrics to Simon and Garfunkel's bridge over troubled water then had us sing it to her when she was stressed, often multiple times a day. She was replaced a few weeks before the end of the school year. Years later we learned she had a mental breakdown, which was the reason she was replaced. She never taught again. Almost 30 years later and I still know that song by heart. Almost 30 years. Jesus. Life moves pretty fast. That's actually a little sweet, even if it is inappropriate. I had a 6th grade teacher who would choose the best behaved student of the day, always a girl, to give him a shoulder and neck rub. I was just always really jealous that I wasn't the best behaved, super cringy Mr. B. My 5th grade teacher never let me go to the bathroom when it was apparent I had a UT. I peed my pants every time and she never said or did anything about it. Reminds me of what happened in 5th grade. A boy next to my class pooped during the assembly. Everyone just pushed him and ran away. One year later the guy tells me that he had diarrhea and the teacher refused to let him go to the bathroom. She just kept saying no. And his classroom was very very close to the toilet. Frick the woman. I still hate her. Crappy as ever. In middle school, I had a math teacher talk about statistics. Somewhere in there. He said that statistically, 3 out of the 7 girls in the class will be strippers at some point in their lifetime. He even had a joke about how all the boys were probably hoping it would be Tina, the hottest girl in the class, not a real name. Everybody laughed. We were actually miffed confused when he was fired later. Looking back, all I can say is wow, how did I miss how wrong that was? This was a Catholic, pay tuition school too. If he kept this up long enough to normalize stuff like this, sometimes it's not noticed until you're out of the setting. It's nearly unbelievable that it can take that big a stick to the head for some people, but also why stuff like this needs to be shut down right away. The more it happens the more normal it seems. I've posted this before, but still. When I was in elementary school, our pay teacher had a policy that he didn't share with us. Apparently, it was his rule that girls couldn't wear skirts when we were in the gym. If you were wearing a skirt, he would hoist it up to make sure we were wearing shorts underneath. Most girls were not wearing shorts underneath, and he knew it. He did it to the girls, myself included, from kindergarten all the way up until 4th grade. This is disgusting, especially since he got away with it for 4 years. 3rd grade teacher placed all of the boys in class on timeout and had tea time with all the girls for 30 minutes once a week. His reasoning, which he told us, was that boys were mean bullies and girls are nice and should be rewarded. This is one of a dozen or so things that the parents all documented over the course of the year. His first year teaching. Ultimately he was fired. Yikes. Plus if there's any way to make sure all the boys do hate and bully the girls, it's to punish them for something they haven't done while the girls have tea. When I was in 9th grade my Spanish teacher had us pick Spanish names. I chose Jesus but she refused to let me have that name, saying I looked like Antonio Banderas. So, my name was Antonio, whenever we would take quizzes or tests she'd walk the aisles, always stopping at me, resting her hip on my shoulder. Then on a Monday, she had a black eye. Before class she and I were having a discussion about me turning in late homework. A fellow student comes in, goes to the teacher's desk and says, Ms. Blank, what happened to your eye? The teacher looks at the girl, looks at me, and replies, Antonio and I got into a quarrel over the weekend and he hit me. What the frick? What a weird lady. In the third grade we used to say the Pledge of Allegiance, USA, every morning before class. Then one day the teacher said that the black students in the class didn't have to get up and say the pledge because they weren't really citizens. As a white kid I was jealous of not having to do it every morning but as an adult I think it abhorrent. Mrs. Doobie if you're reading this, then I'm surprised you're live, you racist sack of crap. In 8th grade we had a unit on the holocaust. Some students were chosen to be the Jews, and had to wear yellow stars, hide during off periods, and get treated pretty crappy by other students. 
This was all supposed to help kids understand how horrible it all was. Didn't realize until years later how fricked up it was once I really thought about it. That's really crappy holy frick. Reminds me of the Stanford prison experiment. He had a jar of punishments for whenever you broke one of the rules. Both the punishments and the rules could be created by the students, and if you broke the rules you had to draw a punishment. Rules included everything from insulting another student, to speaking out of turn, to forgetting a pencil. The punishments all centered on public humiliation. And because it was a class of high schoolers given almost full reign every class devolved into nothing but trying to bait other students into being punished or convincing the teacher they needed to be. Punishments included forcing students to get on hands and knees while pushing a penny across the room with their nose and saying beep beep I'm a jeep. Performing the highly sexual call on me dance. Requiring students to scoot up and down every aisle of desks on their butt like a dog while barking the whole time. Or making one kid spend an entire class at the front of the room, facing the wall, wearing a literal dunce cap. I forgot a pencil one day and had to stand at the front of the room while every student in the class balled up a piece of paper and threw it at me. One kid threw an entire notebook. I then had to crawl around on the floor and clean up all the trash. The teacher ended up getting reported at the end of the year after I and several other students complained about it unofficially to a different teacher. And while he wasn't fired the jar of punishments was gone the next year. That's crappy but I laughed pretty hard when I read beep beep I'm a geep. My 4th grade teacher taught us that sound travels faster than light. A kid called Brian asked. But don't you see the lightning before you hear the thunder I don't remember what her response what. But she ended with and that's why sound travels faster than light. My first grade teacher picked on a girl who couldn't read well. Called her dumb and stuff. The girl was already unpopular and I feel terrible looking back on it. At the time, though, we were all so young it was just like, well, she's an adult. I guess she can do whatever. I remember in middle school this girl that used to get a lot of crap from some of our classmates. Looking back, I really wish I would have stood up for her or, at the very least, maybe tried to be her friend. Kids can be really mean and hurtful. I used to have homeroom in the morning that was overseen by one of our pay coaches. Not the stumpy middle age coach, the young handsome, looks like he almost made it to the majors, coach. They adored him, I mean adored him, and they would all sit on his desk and talk to him and giggle at everything he said. They some of them started doing things like playing with his hair and tugging on his clothes. Before the end of the year, he would have multiple 15 16 year old girls sitting on his lap over the course of the morning. At the time I just sort of laughed it off, if not a bit jealous even. But now I realize, holy crap, I found out a few years later. He had been fired from his previous school because he and the school nurse got caught banging in a utility closet. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of curious what ended up happening to that dude. I mean on the bright side at least it was the school nurse and not a bunch of the female students. 9th grade gym teacher told me it's okay if you sit out of running the mile. It must be hard to run with those melons. I grew up with his daughter too so it was extra weird. My grade 7 shop teacher had a bottle of Pepsi that, depending on how late in the day shop class was, would get significantly less Pepsi colored. Shockingly he only had 3 fingers on one hand, never heard a reason for this. Every time we asked there was a different story. My favorite story though was, a bunch of us were at the local burger shop. We were in high school at this point, and Mr. L came in. We got to asking him what he was up to now and he told us he was teaching at the local composite school. If you got expelled etc you went to comp. Tuesday and Thursday afternoons. It was Tuesday at 2ish. When we mentioned this he grabbed his coat etc and ran out. He came back in 2 minutes later saying ah. Frick those little bastards. And waited for his burger. One of our high school teachers taught us how to tell the difference between vodka and water in a water bottle without opening it. I got caught with a small amount of weed at my high school. While waiting for my parents to come and get me, two teachers talked about bending me over and spanking me. Those teachers, a couple years later, were indicted for touching students. Comma when spanking gets kinky on accident, the frick dad. My primary 5 teacher was a mad C. 
He used to launch blackboard dusters at students, with proper force. It'd leave a dust trail in the air. You'd come into class some days praying you wouldn't get smashed by Haley's duster. He was physically abusive to one student in particular who had learning difficulties. The one time that sticks out most to me was when he grabbed said student by the neck. Called him a pest and ignoramus. That was his favorite word I swear he said that 20 times a day. And slammed him onto his desk. We came into class one day and the furor wasn't there. We had subs for the rest of the year and he never came back. I learned years later that he himself had a breakdown and was now working as a public park attendant. Being Australian I assumed Mad C meant he was good. Whoops. My HS shop teacher fricked a female student. It's kind of funny since he considered himself the moral authority anytime we used cuss words or something during class. It's kind of funny since he considered himself the moral authority. Many pedophiles do. In first grade we were asked what our favorite animal was. I said snake. Because you know snakes are cool. The teacher looks over and goes oh. You can't put snake. It's a reptile not an animal. Fourth grade teacher pulled a chair out from under a mentally disabled student. She also told us a lot of really personal stuff about her marriage. I told my mom and she had me taken out of the class. The teacher protested so we had a meeting with the principal, wherein I told her all of the things I knew about my teacher's marriage. I got out of the class. Hopefully the teacher also got out of that class. My geometry teacher had a Chinaman on the sun routine where he would put a cone, reminiscent of a stereotypical Chinese hat, and tap dance in front of the class. My 6th grade math teacher was also recently arrested for exposing himself to joggers in a public park, along with a bunch of other old guys. Flash a club? No, it was a flash mob. I had a 2nd grade teacher, not my 2nd grade teacher, but she taught the other 2nd grade class in the adjacent classroom, who used to give students birthday spankings, over her knee, and one spank for each year, so luckily we're only talking 6 or 7 spanks. After the final spank, you'd get a pinch to help you grow. Never got them myself, but saw it many times. At the time, didn't think much of it. Heck, kids thought it was fun. Looking back on it now, well, dang, you can bet that wouldn't fly these days. I legitimately forgot about birthday spankings until just now. Had this one substitute teacher everybody knew was pretty strange but nothing too alarming. One day when I had him in 6th grade he walked up behind me at my desk while I was doing a worksheet and asked if I needed help. I said I didn't as I was almost done, but he leaned over me and started reading it anyway. After a few seconds he started telling me what a good job I was doing and began to rub my back. It made me uncomfortable and I left immediately to use the bathroom but didn't really realize how creepy it was until a while after. I go to a private Christian school. When I was in first grade, my class performed the traditional Thanksgiving play which reenacted the interaction between the pilgrims and the Indians. If you had dark hair and dark skin, you were an Indian. If you had light hair and light skin, you were a pilgrim. We also sang a song that goes, a a a a a Indians say yo ho and teachers would enforce dancing like a chicken as Indian rituals. Later in the song the Indians reply to the pilgrims with pale face, yes. Also had a pay teacher who used to dress up every year as a big baby and he would hit people on the head and hit girls in the butt with his bottle. He got fired for writing love letters to students. Sounds like something Michael Scott would think up. 4th grade, Mrs. Yana. She read us a story about a teacher murdering their students with poison chalk, which she wrote. Had my hand slapped with a ruler because I was channeling the devil while I drew, apparently. Thought I was a sinner so I learned to write with my right hand. Thinking back on it, super fricked up. Fun fact, sinistra means left, which is where the word sinister comes from. My second grade teacher was a real witch. I went to school in a not so nice part of AZ. And she was so freaking rude to everyone I don't know how she wasn't fired. She threw erasers at people. Wouldn't let us drink water bottles in the classroom if we brought them from home. Worst of all though, was this girl in our class named Gemma. Gemma was a nice girl deep down but was very moody. Most likely on account of some issues at home. 
One day, our teacher was in a particularly bitchy mood and went through Gemma's backpack. That's where she found a spare pair of undies. Likely in the event that Gemma had an issue at school, and she held them up in front of the whole class and said oh 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 oh. Panty poos all the boys tease Gemma for the rest of the year and I don't recall her coming back to school after that. Frick you miss. H your C. Had a choir teacher pick up the smallest boy in the class and scream at him until he was red in the face. I went to the principal. Teacher never came back. I'm grateful you told the principal. Assaulting me because I didn't kiss her. Kindergarten. Back in probably 1979, we had this mousy sissy spacic looking teacher who had it as policy that every kid who came into class first thing in the morning had to kiss her on the cheek. I don't even remember if I did or didn't do it that morning. I know that another kid and I in that class looked very similar. It could have been him that didn't kiss her. Or it could have been me because I don't really remember. Anyways, I was sitting in class with my back to the teacher. We had large round tables with maybe 4 kids per table. When class started and she called me out publicly in front of the class that I hadn't kissed her. I was an extremely shy child and this was the worst thing that could have happened. The whole class's attention focused on me. I basically froze and ignored her order for me to come up to her and kiss her in front of the class. I had my legs feet wrapped around the legs of the chair I was sitting in. She got mad, stormed over to me and tried to yank me out of the chair. The chair went with me and then flew from me to loudly clatter across the floor and I freaked out. Bawling screaming etc etc. She realized she fricked up big time and backed off as I continued to cry. I'm in my 40s now and can still remember it quite vividly. Frick you Mrs. Thompson. We had a teacher make us smell bleach to learn the difference between acids and bases. I got the question correct but my brain cells paid the price. For me it was when my 5th grade teacher, during our unit on the civil war, had us debate whether or not the south should secede. I know he was trying to get us to understand the economics of the war, but if you tell 10 year olds to come up with reasons to justify keeping black people enslaved, they will come up with some pretty racist crap. I remember him pulling aside the one black kid in our class afterwards to ask if he was okay to tell him our classmates didn't really mean it when they said that since black people are the color of dirt it's okay to treat them like dirt. In grade 12, my English teacher told a student she could get out of doing an essay if she tried some extremely powerful hot sauce in front of the class. This stuff even came with a waiver form. She tried it in front of the class, face turned red, then she puked. Teacher kept his word and she didn't have to write an essay that the rest of the class still had to write. At least he kept his word though. I have a photo of my 5th grade teacher with a male student from my class sitting on his lap during a sleepaway field trip. When we were sophomores in high school, I saw the teacher on the news. He'd been arrested for having a 10 year old boy passed out drunk in his apartment. When I saw that, I immediately thought of that picture and it became much more sinister. In 7th grade, my algebra teacher got me some mints from Victoria's Secret because she knew I liked mints. I don't recall her buying anything for any of the other students, she also bent over in front of me a few times and was wearing a thong. At the time I was sorta of like, a, hey, whatever, now it's just kind of weird to think about. Also, my health teacher in 9th grade said that men couldn't be raped. Though this one I did realize was fricked up and I almost flunked the class because I refused to listen to a word she said the entire rest of the time. I grew up in a very rough neighborhood. Projects. Public assistance. ETC. In middle school music class, we had plastic xylophones without mallets so we used our pens. Anyway, we had that cool teacher who you later learn isn't so cool. If two students had an issue. He would have them stand across from each other in the middle of the room and basically have a diss battle. Trading you mama jokes for the rest of the period. Oh. Also, if a student was getting bullied he would join in and crack jokes on the kid. I knew it was fricked up even then, but now that I'm an educator myself it's frickin' mind blowing. I kept waiting for this to loop back to the xylophones. I was in first grade and my teacher consistently wouldn't give me the same things as the other students. I distinctly remember her passing out glow and the dark vampire teeth for Halloween and she refused to give me one. She said it was because I didn't nap and was playing a possum. If she ever handed out candy, I never got any. 
I was a chubby kid so I'm pretty sure that was the reason. 9th grade I had a teacher move me directly next to his desk so he could talk to me during class. He did this to every girl who had big boobs. He would constantly walk by and check my work if I had a semi low cut shirt on. I was back from spring break in high school and previous to that I had a suicide attempt. All my teachers were made aware of the situation so arrangements could be made to help me with school while I was coping. During independent study in science class I was wearing one of my long sleeved uniform shirts that had crept slightly exposing a bit of my wrist. Nobody noticed until my teacher walked by and grabbed my arm and pulled my sleeve up and loudly said while examining my mutilated forearms. Wow, where did all this come from? He knew what happened. That's how my peers found out too. That's just fricked up. My grade 6 teacher read chicken soup for the preteen soul specifically the parts about shopping for a new bra, getting your first period and all other female puberty related stories to the entire class almost on a daily basis. This doesn't sound terrible on its own, but he was 35 plus, and was later disciplined by the board for inappropriately contacting his 11 year old female students, calling them on their home telephones and asking them sexual questions about their period. French kissing etc. My younger sister had a teacher who thought improper fractions couldn't be simplified. I believe she was a third grade teacher but she teaches high school now. Those poor kids. I mean she literally thought they couldn't be simplified. Like 6 stroke 12 equals 1 stroke 2 but 48 stroke 12? You were stuck there. Funny enough, I've been teaching a student improper fractions and that's exactly where she's stuck. For 6 months now, I have tried everything. I went to a tiny private school from my 2nd grade year to the 8th, and 6 of those years were spent in the same intermediate classroom with nobody my age. This class was taught by the director of the school, and her idea of teaching was read it in the book and figure it out. The only thing she did was grade papers and write notes on the board for us to copy. If I asked for help in math, She'd hand me a piece of chalk and tell me to go to the board. I'd stand up there all day sometimes, on the same lesson for up to a week. She expected every single page in the textbook to be done at the end of the year, and thus, I was still in my 7th grade math book halfway through 8th grade. She never helped, never explained, just sent me to the chalkboard and accused me of not trying. If I asked to get a drink of water, she'd accuse me of procrastinating but then turn around and tell me I didn't drink enough and that I was hurting my kidneys. Here's the kicker, before I went there, I was tested at my old school and was determined to be a gifted student, however that works. By the time I made it out, I'd fallen so far behind it took 2 years of high school to claw my way back to average. In the 4th grade, we did a unit on slavery in the Americas and how bulls it was. Each of us spent a day as a slave and a day as a master. I specifically remember at that age understanding that it was unfair, and had my slave do petty crap like grab my bag when he was already up to grab his and other trivial things. The girl that was my master trashed her desk and told me to clean it right before we were supposed to go to gym or something and then punished me for not finishing her desk. The teacher's take on the subject, see? Slavery wasn't fun or fair. I had to miss recess for a week for arguing about it being unfair. What did you do that got you suspended from school? Two of my friends got into a fight, and I tried pulling them apart and they suspended all three of us. Jokes on them though, all we did was have three days to play on my, at the time, new PS2. Reminds me of the South Park Gamsphere episode. I once skipped an entire day of school in middle school. Just walked to the bus stop. Waved to my mom as she drove by on her way to work, then walked back home because I had to poop before my bus arrived. I actually tried to go back to the bus but it pulled away as I came in sight of it, so I went home and played video games. My mom got a call that afternoon that I had not come to school and would be suspended if she did not excuse me for the day. Despite it being he end of the day, which she didn't. When she told me I was suspended she took me to Target to buy a new video game since I'd be home all day. I walked away from a kid that punched me. Zero tolerance policy bulls. My father was pee at the school and basically said next time I'll just tell my kid to fight back if that's the case. This seems like really common in the US. And it sounds like so much BS. But can't do much more harm to that school system anyways. 
My algebra 2 teacher trash talked me about my homework grade even though I did as he told me to do. It was in front of the whole class which was embarrassing. I got pee and sent him an angry and nasty email. 2 day suspension. I was 18 years old, and my teacher ran into me in town on a Saturday afternoon with a cigarette in my mouth and asked me to put it out. I laughed and said no. He got so annoyed at this. He went and told the headmaster that I told him to frick off. No one believed I didn't say this, so suspended. My first insight into how easy it is for someone to lie and still cause severe consequences to me. That's insane they can suspend you for something like that that occurred off school grounds. Power tripping admins are the worst. Suspended for skipping English class to sneak into the school theater and build scenery for an upcoming show. I was a real rebel. Side note, I have had a pretty successful career building automation and scenery and my English skills have not paid the bills as it were. Rock on, man. During the apartheid era in South Africa, age 16, I wrote an essay asking, where have all the black kids gone? The point was that whilst we all played soccer together in the afternoons and went surfing together on weekends, schools were race based and there were no black kids allowed in my school. I was kicked out for having subversive tendencies. Good on you, friend. My brother got a detention slip of his framed. The reason for the detention written on the slip was, racing the belt sander. Yay, I'd probably frame that one. I hit a kid in the head with a cookie sheet in cooking class. I wasn't in that much trouble because the teacher knew it didn't hurt him and we were friends but then when asked why I did it I said he was being a C. Older Mormon teacher tend not to like the that so I got 2 days for it. I got stabbed in cooking class. The teacher just told me to go wash it out. Nothing happened until I got home and showed my parents. Walked out the door and all the way home because I was sick. Got a 3 day vacation to get better. Principal thought it was funny. He had to suspend me anyway though. My principal once drove me home because I had gotten sick at school. Videotape my buddies streaking at the zoo on a class trip. Then presented the video to the class a sighting of rare animals at the zoo. That is freaking amazing. I threw a pie at this one kid's face on buy a pie for charity day. Got two days in school. Also once for throwing an orange at the blackboard. Why I threw the orange is still beyond me. Comma why I threw the orange is still beyond me. There was a fly. I didn't see a fly. You were probably distracted by the orange I threw. Smoking a cigarette. Off school property. Over legal age. During a spare period. Still trying to figure that one out. Even the school cop said he couldn't do anything or even confiscate my smokes because I was of legal age and not providing them to minors. Vice principal hated that he couldn't get me in deep legal crap so he suspended me. I got in school suspension for the same thing. Except it was after school 3 days of ISS. 2 weeks before graduation. Third to last day of school was in the cafeteria before first period started. They would always serve breakfast. So like every morning, I was in line to get a bacon egg and cheese. Last person in line, about to go into the door where they made the sandwiches, when a teacher comes up and closes the door right in my face. I am literally the next person in line, and no one is behind me. Time to go to class. The appropriate response to that statement was apparently not frick you see. Suspended the last 3 days of school, and started night school the next year. Your right frick you see isn't the right response. Frick you see, I'm getting my biscuit beers. I was in science class in 11th grade and kid A kept talking smack to kid B. Kid A told him he was a ghetto piece of crap and he would beat his butt because he was an ROTC and was basically a marine. Freaking moron. I tell kid A to chill because I know for a fact he'd get beat up. Didn't tell him that though. Kid B placed at state in wrestling and was always wearing local fight gym gear. We have a lot of local gyms that pro fighters train at and he's rocking one of the better gyms gear. Kid B gets fed up and open hand slaps Kid A so hard he falls out of his chair. Then he proceeds to beat the pee out of him. He literally pee himself. I break them apart and then get yelled at by the teacher for jumping him. A few minutes later campus security picks us all up and we head towards supervision. I state my case and have witnesses saying I was trying to defuse the whole thing. I end up getting a Saturday school and a 2 day suspension. Kid B gets suspended for 3 days. 
Kid A gets a Saturday school and transferred out of the class. I made that teacher's life heck for the rest of the semester. I told a bully that it was shitheads like him that led to incidents like Columbine. This was in early 2001. I was in 8th grade. Disciplinarian says to me you're technically right, but we have to suspend you for this, but know that I agree with you. Holy crap. Really cool disciplinarian it sounds. For doing the Harlem Shake. My entire baseball team did one before one of our games when the fad was just starting to get popular. A few days after the video posted, the entire team was called into the principal's office one by one and was given 3 day suspensions for inappropriate behavior, because some kids were dancing shirtless and some were in sliders, and was kicked off of the varsity baseball team. They even called our parents into the office and played our video on a projector for them while laser pointing which one their son was. All the parents thought it was the biggest joke that our school decided to act this severely and demanded that the principal reduce the punishment. She didn't. The entire JV team got moved up to varsity to play the rest of our games and got creamed like 15-0 by every team they played. We were eventually allowed back on the team for the last 3 games of the season. There was so much public outrage over the whole event, in my small town, that the principal got fired and replaced the summer following our season. What a boner. My principal literally had the entire high school make a Harlem shake in our gymnasium. My daughter got suspended two years ago in the sixth grade because some kid grabbed her chest for the third time in gym and she cut loose like I told her to. The first time the gym teacher said he'd talk to him. The a few days later the kid did it again. Oops squeeze. Accident my butt. I went up there and they said they'd talk with him. I pointed out that talking isn't doing anything and I wanted him to be punished for sexually assaulting my daughter. They hinted around that if I did anything outside the chain of command at this public school that she would be facing suspension and such too. I just looked at them and then looked at her and said, if he does it again, lock him and drop him. Then looked at them and said, do something or we will. A few days later I had to go up to the school. They suspended her and him. Finally, because he grabbed her and she grabbed his hand and screamed and then jumped him and pulled him down into an arm bar. She was yelling tap or snap until the teacher came up and tried to break them up. His friend ended up tapping for him. She didn't break anything. His parents were p. He admitted to grabbing her two other times but they were going to suspend her for two weeks and him three days. We had a nice discussion about sexual assault and how I was going to involve the school. The gym teacher principal and the kid and parents in litigation and call the cops anyway because frick that. It worked out eventually. She apparently wasn't his first victim. She is the only one that whooped his punk butt though. He never did come back to school after the two weeks. She got two weeks as well but I switched some things around at work and took some vacation time and I took her to King's Island and we went to the movies quite a bit. Spent a lot of father daughter quality time together. I tell her to this day I am proud of her. Good father right here. I stumbled across a jumper stuffed in the toilet. I proceeded to take the biggest crap. No kidding. One giant log. Maybe 25-30 centimeters in thick too. On top of it. Showed me mate. Word spread. I get suspended. Jumper stuffer still has not been prosecuted. My friend's brother was in the army and brought back firecrackers from Iraq. In the UK you never ever see firecrackers. I dropped one into a crowded stairwell and by god those were some powerful firecrackers. Wow you're lucky the Iraqi firecracker was actually just a firecracker. I was in computer class, early 2000s, and made a powerpoint file. I then repeatedly kept copying and pasting it and resurrecting all the copied files each time. My computer teacher deleted it one time but never mentioned it to me. So I just started again. I didn't even consider it at the time but I got up to 96% of the school's storage capacity before I got called down to the VP's office. A one day suspension and my login to the school computers was blocked at all times except when in computer class. I had two men at Ata Tots in my serving in middle school. 3 days in school suspension. It suited me well cause I hated class and would always rather read. So I did. Hey, Napoleon. Give me some of your tots. Attempting suicide. My psychiatrists and psychologists have since said that that was the worst thing they could have done. All of my bad feelings were tied to my schoolwork in some way. So being suspended right before final exams wasn't a good move and only made things worse. 
That's awful. I hope you're doing better now. I didn't get fully suspended. Just threatened by a teacher but I'm still pee about it. Came to school in a trench coat and weird hat for costume day during spirit week. Was supposed to be inspector gadget on a budget. Some kid asked if I was supposed to be a child diddler because, well it did kinda look like a creepy guy costume. I said you're sure. Teacher overheard and made me write an apology letter to pedos for making fun of them. I said something along the lines of no, I'm not writing that because I'm not sorry. What should I be sorry for? Sorry they are horrible people? Why? You support them. Finally wrote the letter and it was just sarcasm apologizing for how tough it must be scar so many children. Seems like a lot of hard work, etc. She threatened suspension and our principal defended me. Frick you misses. M and your droopy old lady neck. That is not the direction I expected that to go in. Fold paper boats. Now this wasn't a small amount of boats. I folded about 400 boats and put them in the principal's office. I went into the women's bathroom in the teacher's lounge. They had soft lighting in there so it wasn't super bright. I put clear soap all over the toilet seat and walked away. Figured someone would sit down and get covered in soap and it'd be worth a chuckle. The principal happened to be the one to use it next. She slipped off got a nasty bruise on her hip and ripped her clothes. Was called over the intercom with swears and got yelled at once I got into the office. Another teacher saw me near the area and assumed it was me. Suspended for 4 days. Principal got a talking to for the way she freaked out on me. At least you did it on principal. Bullies were holding me down and hitting me. I got free and broke two of their noses. Got one day out of school and four days in school suspension but they never fricked with me again. I'm proud of you mister. You tank ninja one. INB for typical ass credit onto not me. But, suspension isn't really a thing where I'm from. But my class was a little worse than the school for these kinds of things. Here's a list of only the major stuff we did. Some of which actually had big repercussions. Note, none of them with teachers in the room. Throwing darts in class before the teacher came and one guy decided to throw the broom handle forward towards the blackboard. Shattering it. Broke numerous lights and windows from playing indoor football. Soccer. With a tiny ball. Not once did any of us actually take the fall and or pay for them. Had only one actual cabinet in our classroom, which got taken away after we stored a sound system in there and kept playing it loudly during breaks, then locked the cabinet each class. Actually me and a classmate, brought fast food in class for our birthday and it evolved into a foot fight, which devolved into someone throwing a goddamn subwoofer and barely missing someone's face. Did leave a hole in the wall though. We were cold once and brought rubbing alcohol to school and set it on fire on a rock. We were sitting in front of the campfire and somehow the bottle shot a literal fireball. Causing mass hysteria and two kids going to the hospital with minor burns. This actually got the principal and school counselor involved. Cause none of us snitched. Did the thing from the Captain Underpants books where you put ketchup packets under the toilet seats in the bathroom so they explode all over when someone sits down. I thought it was funny administration didn't. Squishies were hilarious. Took a large block of hash from Ireland with us over to our school skiing trip in Italy. Two of my mates proceeded to projectile vomit all over the dinner table. Thanks for serving veal covered in one stroke 2 inch of fat. I didn't get sick so had to be kept up overnight by a doctor who was flown up the mountain to us. We were sent home the next day, of which because I got high was sang by my mother and younger brother the whole ride home from the airport. 2 stroke 10 would not recommend. You have some cool parents. Most memorable time. The exams had finished for the term. The teacher decided to give us some maths work to fill in time until the term was over. I really didn't see the point as it did nothing for our grades. So I decided to talk to my friends. Well the teacher said you eggnum. I'd like to see you doing your work please. Petulant teenage me responded with I'd like to see you stick your head up your ass but it's not going to happen. And thus began the legend of the student who told a teacher to wear their butt as a hat. Set a deodorant can on fire. Then me and my mate sprayed it with another deodorant can until it exploded sending shrapnel everywhere. This is a suicide bomber right here, everyone. Brought firecrackers to school and blew them up in the open outdoor area during break. Luckily this was 1981-ish, 
so I only got suspended for a couple days instead of being arrested as a terrorist. I didn't know it at the time because I was in 5th grade, but this happened a week after Columbine. I brought a cap gun to school, and after everyone went home, I went with a friend to the bathroom during an after school art class so I could show him my new cap gun. I held it out the bathroom and pulled the trigger a few times. What I also didn't know was that outside the window was where the buses were still loading with students. I saw someone run by, and booked it out of the bathroom. A few minutes later, the principal ran into the art room, where my friend immediately ratted me out. I was suspended for two days. Friend. Stole a bag of goldfish in third grade and ran out of the cafeteria without then 30 minutes later they found me and I got a two day suspension. I was dating an intern, studying to be teacher, in my final year, and I was a date at the teacher's dance. We got some horrified and amused looks, especially since I was already serving a week suspension at the time, for getting sent out of class too many times. I didn't get suspension, as school was almost over and only final exams were left she got a stern talk from the principal. To clarify, I was 18, she was 22. I know it all sounds like a Arthathapan story, but I swear that happened. Arthath probably actually did happen but I'm not gonna. Pete and I had been arguing, we never got on really. In a boarding school environment those little disagreements can spiral very quickly. Anyway, Pete cut in front of me in the lunch queue because Pete was a troll before the word troll existed. When I tried to get back in front, he shoved me. So I, in my angry teenage state, picked up my wooden lunch tray and swung it into his head, splitting his scalp and sending a spray of blood all over the food while he slumped to the floor. I then casually walked out, went back to my room and had a pot noodle while I waited for the inevitable shitstorm. Shitstorm ensued. Headmaster tried to expel me, but then realized that expelling a kid for standing up for himself might result in him being fired in a school with such a strong anti-bullying policy. So I had a week at home, where my dad told me he was proud of me for standing up for myself. I got back at the same time as Pete, who had spent two days in a hospital and the rest in the infirmary. We still didn't get on, but he stopped being a prick to me. My friend brought the manual for keep talking and nobody explodes some kid saw it in his bag. School didn't care it was just a manual for some game he was going to play after school with friends. Dickhead administrators. I love that game. I was from the wrong side of the tracks. With the help of another teacher I proved my 9th grade English teacher was flunking me on purpose. I would show my other Spanish one teacher the work I did. He would initial it. I would turn it in. Grade time would come, I would have zeros for the work. Instead of acting rationally and letting him take care of it, I proceeded to her classroom and picked up a desk, threw it at her. That was my last day of school. Got a ged, then went on to college. This was in 1990, I am not quite so irrational anymore. I got suspended for the white collar crime of poor academic integrity. I cheated. Quizzes in my class were pulled straight from an online bank. Started the year by studying, then memorizing the quiz at home, then cramming right before the quiz with it, to bam. Caught using it during the quiz, I was told that I wouldn't be able to get into college with this kind of thing on my record, and certainly wouldn't be able to get into my specialized field of study, told this by my HS, and also by my college during a visitation day as here are the only things that are a definite no-go for application considerations. I am now 10 years from HS and more than 5 years into my post-collegiate career, still waiting for it to catch up I guess. Some dude was smoking cigs outside near the loading docks. I did something unrelated to get 5 days of in-school suspension, ISS, which I got a lot of, and it is just sitting in a room all day doing mindless work, getting treated like garbage by this horrible woman. Vice principal said he thought the guy smoking cigs by the loading docks was me. I asked if the penalty of smoking cigs outside was out of school suspension. Oss, it was. I confess to be the guy smoking cigs outside. The guy smoking cigs by the loading docks was someone I knew. I gave him the cigs to go lol. Got my friend out of trouble. Missed out of being treated like trash in a room at school. Had 5 days of playing Halo 3 and waking up at noon. I won. I got sent to alternative school for having tools in a toolbox in my truck. 
Long story short I had a big lifted truck me and my dad built for overlanding. Faculty told me frequently they thought it was an eyesore. Faculty always called me into the office to search my truck for drugs. I was pretty straight edge then and had nothing to worry about so gave them the go ahead. They didn't find crap except a toolbox locked in the bed of my truck. They claim the tools inside can be used as a weapon and are prohibited to be in my possession on school property. I advise the faculty I'm driving around a 70s era Chevy truck that weighs roughly 3 tons and that in and of itself is a weapon. They escort me off campus. Outside of some bad grades here and there I never had any disciplinary issues in school. So for them to throw the book at me over some screwdrivers and wrenches made me lose faith in the system. At cross country practice my brother and some other upperclassmen put a couple freshmen's water bottles on a mattress and set said mattress over a 6 inch deep pond. They all got suspended for 2 weeks. Banned from prom homecoming etc. Banned from ever playing school sports again. And received a level 3 referral that is guaranteed to make applying for college a whole lot harder. Back in my day the seniors super glued a freshman's eyelids shut and the only punishment was a couple hill sprints. Got expelled second week of 8th grade because the d-bag bully with the locker next to mine close fist hit his girlfriend in the face. They were arguing. I told him that wasn't cool, so he asked what I was going to do about it. I snapped and ended up smashing his face into the locker and breaking his nose. I was expelled because I would not apologize for fighting. You can bully me all you want, but frick you if you're going to hit someone 50 pounds lighter than you that you care about. Had a teacher who hated the word suck. One day someone used it, and she raised her voice, saying something like next person who uses the word suck, it'll take you out in the hall and tell you why it's such a bad word. I said without thinking at least she won't show us. I got my first and only ISS. I told the vice principal that it was bulls that I had to take an additional math class, essentially remedial math. Despite having an A in the math class I was currently in, before I was allowed to take trig and pre-calc. This basically meant that I was unable to take AP calc in high school. Basically, the school put too many freshmen into more advanced math courses meant for sophomores and juniors. But after a while they realized a lot of the freshmen weren't retaining the material well enough. So they took some course meant for seniors to sleep skip while still taking a math class as a requirement, and required students to take it before moving on to pre-calc. So if you were a freshman or sophomore, this meant you just took another course before AP Calc. If you were a junior like me, it meant that you wouldn't be able to take AP Calc before you graduated. So I was suspended for the rest of the day and I played COD 4. What is something a high school teacher told you that you will never forget? On 9-11, while classes were all but cancelled, most teachers just rolled in TVs and left the news on. Not Jim R. He got up and lectured. To the groans of students, he talked about the effects this would have on the economy, our politics, our culture and society, and he was right, in somewhat broad strokes, of course. But this was literally hours after the towers collapsed, when so much was still unknown, frightening and tragic. It really gave me what I would consider a solid base of understanding the things that would come in the next decade. He talked about how traveling would change with restrictive security measures, how politics would take advantage of terrorism, how the wars we will engage will be paid for by my generation, my kids generation and so on. He talked about how racism will spike toward Middle Eastern peoples out of anger and fear and how that is totally wrong. As a vet and former cop. He cautioned us to not join the military while emotions ran high and a sense of patriotism was thick in our veins. It was a gift. As the years went on. WMDs. The Iraq War. Tsar. Department of Homeland Security all came about. I felt like I already knew. I will never forget that fourth period class. I had a gym teacher that was known for being strict rude. He actively would make kids cry on the regular. Anyway, after my dad passed away he was still super strict towards me, but one day after track practice he caught me in the hall and said your dad would be so proud of you, it caught me so off guard, I actually cried. So he did live to his reputation of making kids cry. Good morning, I'm Mr. Taylor and I will be teaching grade 10 English this semester. First let me address what you're all wondering, yes, this is a glass eye, I lost it playing darts. 
Dart to the eye, will stick with me for life. My chemistry teacher told my mom that I would do so much better if I asked questions. I've found that this is true in all stages of life. Ask questions. A teacher of mine said he would write me a letter of recommendation. But it had been a week or so and he hadn't gotten back to me yet. I went in a third time to remind him and I started off with an apology. To which he corrected me. Saying don't ever stop advocating for yourself. It's advice I haven't forgotten since. Don't stop advocating for yourself. But please leave me alone for 2 seconds. My partner had a high school teacher that would walk through the busy hallways at school shouting hot coffee. Hot coffee while holding an empty mug. He just wanted people to get out of his way and it always worked. In high school I used to wear a trench coat and was one of the larger kids at the school. I had a French teacher who used to follow me down the halls because the crowds used to part for me and she could get around quicker following me because of it. Leave your verbal guns at the door. This was the HS football coach's first words teaching sex ed at my high school. He used the metaphor of the old American West where cowboys would leave their guns at the door when they entered a saloon to drink so nobody would get killed in a drunken outburst. He said we talk about a lot of topics that might make us feel uncomfortable and tempted to make a joke at someone else's expense to break the tension. He asked us to leave our verbal guns at the door so everyone could feel comfortable asking honest questions. This was back in the late 80s. He was way ahead of his time. My English teacher in grade 6 put A and lot on two separate pieces of paper and taped them to opposite walls on the classroom. Then she got a student to run from A to lot while yelling with them AAAAAAAAAAAA gets to other side Luwut to teach us that they were separate and that a lot is incorrect. I have never forgotten and can still picture it as if it were yesterday it's been 12 years. I struggled with this one too. Still find myself having to correct it in text more often than I'd like. My teacher told me not to give my girlfriend a fetal pig heart for Valentine's Day because she'd probably get a restraining order on me. Looking back, solid advice. WHAT. My high school biology teacher, on the end of every quiz or exam, would put a giveaway point question. The question was always the same. Science is, A exciting, B interesting, C A challenge, D all of the above. No matter which you marked you got the point. However, since this was on every exam, the saying was sandblasted into my long term memory. This led to me always somehow muttering this whenever I was taking an exam in university substituting the word science with whatever necessary. Then it led to me muttering it whenever I was dealing with something stressful. Now it has become a fallback whenever I run into a life roadblock and everything is simply designated A exciting, B interesting, C A challenge, D all of the above. It's simple but it helps keep me from being too negative. I am saving this comment because I want my kids to have this mentality too. Maybe I'll make a poster. My high school baseball coach sociology teacher always used to say those who are prepared create their own luck before exams. This is a true life lesson. Luck favors the prepared. Coming up to our final year 12 exams. My maths teacher handed out an article on the most common things people said on their deathbed. She said no one wished they had worked longer hours, that they had spent more time at work than with their loved ones. If we didn't get the grades we wanted, that's okay, because there'll be a back doors to where we wanted to go. Failure is okay, it's only a minor setback. What's important is having a good balance between work studies, family friends and our own hobbies interest. Not as inspiring as the others but I always found it funny how my teacher would say 90 degrees instead of sit up straight. They should have said Greek letter pi too. What a chump. That our town was a shithole and the best advice he could give us was to move out and live elsewhere. Decades later, he was correct. My grandfather told me the college in this town is excellent, unless you grew up here. Best history teacher I ever had was a substitute. Final day of his week's long run. I told him as much and asked him why he didn't do it full time. He said he'd like to, but he doesn't coach any sports. All the coaches are history teachers because they can get away with spitting out names and dates and descriptions and that counts. His style was more cause and effect and while more engaging, it wasn't deemed necessary by the school board. I said you should move to a better area. He said no. 
He liked it here because it's where he grew up and where he'd die. He confided in me that he had a terminal disease. Died the next year. 2005 a teacher said intelligence of the future will not be defined by how well you know one skill but instead how well you can find information and decipher what information is good and bad. One of my high school teachers said the same thing. A smart person doesn't always know the answer to the question but he knows where to find it or something along those lines. Our high school chemistry teacher said. Remember, a warm test tube or Bunsen burner are no substitutes for a satisfying relationship. And at that age I would not have had any idea what he really meant. In 1974 I was told taught that the planet Mercury had a tightly locked orbit around the sun. That one side of the planet faced the sun all the time. It's not true. Mercury's true orbit and rotational periods were worked out in 1965. TBF. Most high school textbooks are about 30 years behind, so he probably found out in 1995. In my childhood only one person ever tackled my mother about her abuse of me and my siblings. It was parents day and my be of a mother, as usual, turned up to take the credit for my being top of the class again. At one point there was just me, my be of a mother, and Mrs. Soames, physics teacher, in the lab. Mrs. Soames quite calmly challenged her. Saying Mrs. XXXXX, why do you treat Tom's dotty the way you do? She's a good girl and doesn't deserve it. To my astonishment, my evil be of a mother was speechless. No one had ever confronted her before and she just didn't know where to put herself. It was easy for the other teachers and pupils to make snide, patronizing remarks about this cow to me. A 13 year old girl isn't in a position to do anything about it, and I'm guessing they were trying to ease their consciences about the fact that they were too cowardly to intervene. But Mrs. Soames has been a role model for me ever since, and an unforgettable example of those people brave enough to tackle a bully in the presence of their victim. To have someone stand by you when you are vulnerable, and make their support for you clear, I can't tell you how that's changed my view of other people. I had an English teacher my freshman year of high school who was one of the rare adults that treated all of his students with respect while at the same time challenging us to do better. I distinctly remember him telling our class, you are not as mature as you think you are, but you are more mature than your parents give you credit for. He also told us about an agreement rule he had with his own kids. He understood how hard it was for kids to do the right thing in the face of peer pressure. So he had told his kids that if they were ever in a situation, underage drinking, drugs, whatever where they knew they shouldn't be, they could call and using an previously agreed upon code word that was banal and unsuspicious, he would know he needed to go get them and be the bad guy, he would show up, Uncle Buck style and get them out of wherever they were, this would allow them to save face with their friends and there would be no consequences for being the situation in the first place. My favorite math teacher had a philosophy about us understanding how to get to formulas instead of memorizing them. Basically if we memorized them we were gonna remember them wrong and would never be the wiser because we thought we remembered it. My econ prof said the same thing and it's the truth. Go to be able to apply that knowledge to graphs and real life examples. Whenever my teacher said anything controversial that he didn't want repeated, he would preface it with don't quote me on this because I'll just deny it, I still use that. One of the coolest, more laid back teachers I had was straight up like if you try to snitch on me, I control your grades. Struggled with dyslexia and a learning disability my whole life. English class was heck for me every year. Senior year my lit teacher read some short story that was required of me and said, What the frick are you doing here? You are starting in my AP lit class starting tomorrow. I passed the AP test and my entire life really began because he believed in me. I'm now a high school teacher, and while not as great as him, really think I'm doing good work. I struggled in math so badly, officially, I passed it but the reality was that no matter how hard I tried, I could not do it. However, I was an AP English. Turns out, I have a form of dyslexia. Wish I had known that 40 years ago. My favorite history teacher told me follow the money, not in life as such, but in looking at events in history. It wasn't enough to say X country invaded Y country because they wanted more power. Why did they want those lands? What was going on in the economy that made it worth the resources to invade? In truth it rarely comes down to ideals. 
you follow drugs, you get drug addicts and drug dealers, but you start to follow the money, and you don't know where the frick it's gonna take you. Class camp, we're out walking a trail to the next campsite, carrying our lives in our packs, I was not in great physical shape and was well back in the rear, so it's basically just me and one teacher to make sure no one fell too far back. We came to a part where a branch had fallen across the trail, big enough to be an effort to move it but not so large that it couldn't have been moved by any of the 30 plus other students and teachers that had already walked around it. Without even thinking about it, I grabbed the branch and tossed it to the side of the path. The teacher said to me, 30 boys walked past that branch. It took one man to move it, and he made life easier for every person after him. It became a personal motto, of sorts. Make it easier for the people who come after you, although when you do a good job, the person who comes after you is usually also you. My freshman year history teacher told us first day of school about how he went to college with Bill Gates. Said he was one of the people that Bill asked to invest in his startup. He had declined. And here I am, teaching history class to high schoolers. My ancient HS math teacher, who was from Arkansas, had a good deal of Walmart stock from I guess knowing one of the Waltons around its founding. From what I heard he's just been sitting on it this whole time. My mom had me when she was in high school. She had to take me to school with her in a stroller every day. I ended up attending the same school and most of her teachers still taught there and remembered me as a baby. Most had super fond memories of bringing me stuffed animals and crap for me to play with in their class. Except one, Mrs. Engelhardt. She straight up to my face said I remember you. Your mom was that W. Oh crap what the heck. My music teacher when I spent a large length of time skipping school due to various reasons. She had phoned me after spending hours tracking a way to contact me because she was worried. I'm not phoning to tell you off. I'm phoning to make sure you're okay. You don't have to go to the classes you don't like. Your exam is on wed and I am phoning to let you know. No matter what I know that you'd still be practicing because you're a bright student and I know you'll go far no matter what you choose to do. That is incredibly touching what a great person. Sometimes you just need someone to believe in you until you can do it yourself. I had a friend that was in the same history class as me and she had a huge crush on the teacher. She was also salutatorian of our class and literally voted most likely to succeed. I graduated with barely a 3.0. She and I both had our history teacher sign our yearbooks and in mine he wrote I'm going to miss our banter in class. You are a highly intelligent individual. In my friend's yearbook he wrote keep on trucking. I never felt particularly competitive with my friend. But that little bit of irony really changed the way I understood how people view intelligence. My favorite teacher in high school, Coach Brinager, once told me that he bought his niece front row tickets to see NSYNC. Apparently, for some reason or another, her mother could not go with her so instead, he did. He then told me that midway through the concert one of the guys ended up with a hole in the crotch of their pants. This is the a direct quote by him. I guess he didn't notice, or maybe he just didn't care. Either way, this dude was free ballin' and from my vantage point, I could see it all. So there I am, sitting at a concert I didn't want to be at, with a starstruck 13 year old, watching some dude's balls shaken above my head. Good times. He was an awesome teacher though and never gave up on me. I really want to know which NSYNC singer was freeballing. One of my high school teachers asked me if I had ever considered pursuing astrophysics. I hadn't. I was asking a lot of questions and it was a really interesting topic to me. It was the first time a teacher ever saw anything in me and believed in me. Until the pandemic hit, I majored in physics with a minor in astronomy. When the pandemic started, our professors basically said go teach yourselves and ghosted us and I was screwed. I truly believe if the pandemic hadn't happened that I'd still be pursuing that program. Unfortunately, I do not have the funds to do so. I'm now an education major. He told us about the time he and his son secured the only nearby village and started a slave trade on a family oriented Minecraft server. Not how I thought that sentence was going to end, but I'm certainly glad it did. Young man, I said no talking. If you have something to say, meet me out in the hallway and we'll discuss it like men. Another freshman history teacher filling in for my regular teacher after I, a new kid who had only been enrolled for 2 days, 
whispered who is that to my neighbor? The man who invented the diamond. Alright I got your attention now. H. Tracy Hall. Write this name down. Doctor. Hall invented the first reproducible process for making synthetic diamonds. I mean, this is way back in the 50s. Now today, synthetic diamonds are used in oil drilling, electronics, multi-billion dollar industries. Now at the time, Dr. Hall worked for General Electric and he made them a fortune. I mean, incalculable. You want to know how GE rewarded Dr. Hall? A $10 US savings bond. That's real nice, Mr. White. If you want to hurt a man, I mean really hurt a man, you don't hit him in the crotch, you hit him in the wallet, my 11th grade social studies teacher. I had a baseball coach for English sophomore year and we had to write a daily journal. One day our theme was writing about something we regretted. I wrote about how when I was younger, my mom had cancer and regretted not being there more for her. I didn't think he read these things and ended up writing you did nothing wrong and being young. You couldn't have known any better. He was a good man teacher. I did cross country in high school. I was not very good, but not the worst. Middle of the pack. Right before a race. Literally about to line up and get ready to run. I'm nervous as frick. I've been training hard every day after school for this. Our coach gave my team a pep talk. You know, in this life, some people have it, and some people don't. Good luck. Thanks coach. I had a math teacher say he'd bet the farm that two of my classmates wouldn't graduate. They both did, and he's still a douche last I heard. Mrs. Botilho, my senior year English teacher, left me a note on my final essay. And she said that every writing assignment, she would put mine on the bottom of the stack so that she knew she had a good one to look forward to. My high school gym teacher and soccer coach told me get the frick out of this shithole town before you end up getting trapped like I did. Trust me that girl is going to trap you. Definitely never forget that. I did get out, went away to school. Stayed with the girl I was with through college until she cheated on me on my 21st birthday. After that I stayed away from my hometown for about 8 years. Enjoyed my 20s. Now I'm engaged to a wonderful lady that actually went to my high school but didn't tell me she had a crush on me till late in my 20s. We now live in the town next to where we grew up. I was having a particularly bad year in high school emotionally and my grades were starting to reflect it. So my dad went in for parent teacher conference day. When he got to my orchestra director, he bluntly told my dad that I was brilliant. When my dad just kind of shrugged it off. Like okay yeah he's a smart kid I guess. The director looked him in the eye and said, no, you don't understand and proceeded to lecture to him about me. I heard this second hand from my dad and then talked to my director about it afterwards. His words and his faith in me have stuck with me all my life. I'm now finishing up a PhD in mathematical physics. That freaking rules. I teach HS and I'm going to remember this for every parent teacher conference I have for the rest of my career. Kids really are brilliant. That nobody really cares, and that's a good thing. He was a very interesting drama teacher, subbing for the regular teacher for her maternity leave. He was directing a play that he wrote that a few of us were in. In high school most people are terribly self-conscious and afraid of judgment. Be a good person, but go and make mistakes, be silly, live your life, and own it. In the end most people won't remember if you looked stupid for 5 minutes. By teaching us that most things you do are trivial and inconsequential. He coaxed us out of our shells and got us to really act. But it left a big impression on me for my day to day life too. I was a senior and my boyfriend at the time was a junior. I had a part time job at a restaurant and had formed a little crush on one of my co-workers who was a bit older than me. I knew it wasn't realistic. But I couldn't help the way I felt. I confided in my Apush teacher from the previous year who knew both me and my boyfriend. He said to me, everything that happens up there in your mind palace is harmless. You can think and feel however you want, and as long as you don't act on those feelings you're not doing anything wrong. That really grounded me. My boyfriend and I had one of the happiest, fruitful, and stable relationships I've ever been a part of. Although we broke up when I left for college, we're still good friends. 
Shortly after this conversation, my work crush evolved into an amazing friendship and he started dating one of our co-workers who became one of my best friends. They're slightly older than me so I look up to them and joke that they're my parents. They're still the only three people I try and see every time I'm in my hometown. I had a teacher that said kind of the same thing. It's okay to think about pushing your spouse down the stairs. Just don't push your spouse down the stairs. 11th grade AP US history. Anytime somebody in power tells you something with a smile, don't trust a dang thing they said. Whenever they say my fellow Americans they're about to try to get you to do something they'd never do. And there's no such thing as a short war. Especially not for the people in it. Thanks, Mrs. Mellon. And Frick Cancer. Reminds me of a quote I saw if you trust your government explicitly, your history teacher didn't do their job. Sounds like Mrs. Mellon was a very good teacher. I have become aware that I met implicitly not explicitly. English was my second language. My bad. You're just one of those people who'll always struggle with math no matter how much you study. Took that to heart, kept trying, and ended up pursuing mechanical engineering in university. Something a lot of people need to understand about math. Yes, there's some people who are just naturally good at it, like everything else. But it's a skill that can be learned. Enough time and practice and you can learn and understand any form of math. Gym teacher. Date marry someone who likes you more than you like them. Math teacher. I'm not saying you all have to go to Harvard. Life is about the tools you have. School just gives you another tool. Heck drive a truck. But never stop learning. Baseball coach. Nerds have far more interesting lives than jerks. Trust me. First one is interesting and not for the faint of heart. Some people love falling in love. It only works if you want control. Because the one who loves less controls the relationship. Which is good if you have good reasons. But obviously can become sour and that's how abusive relationships start. Our class was supposed to be read in 1984. One day I showed up to class and our teacher hit us with a pop quiz on the previous night's reading assignment. I had not done the reading so I was completely unprepared. I did my best to guess the answers on the first couple of questions but after that, I knew it would be obvious that I didn't do the assignment so I started writing my answers as observations about the book. My last answer was along the lines of, this book is boring or this book is weird. When I got my quiz back, he had written. How would you know? You haven't read it. I saw that and knew I was going to prove him wrong. That night I sat down and read the whole book with the intent of coming to class the next day and telling him why it was weird and boring. Instead, I liked the book and I came to class and told him what I would have done differently the same as the main character. He challenged some of my thoughts and I had to do some introspection. I appreciated that he called me out and that he didn't dismiss me when I came back after reading the entire book. From then on. I always made sure I was prepared for assignments. It has paid off in my career when I have been challenged in my work. I have been able to point out why I came to the conclusions that I did and have earned the respect of many people in my company as a result. What did you learn in school that you thought would end up being useless but actually helped you a lot though life? That situation on group projects where half or more of the team you're assigned to doesn't give a crap about doing any of the work and just wants to get a passing grade through no knowledge or effort. Well, that's a pretty handy guide to the working world. In most office jobs I've had 25% of the people did 75% of the work, or more. Typing, but not in the way you'd think. Our typing teacher drilled into our heads that it would go slowly at first, and that you would build up speed and confidence in time. I've been able to apply that kind of thinking to every single thing I do and it really has helped me not to get discouraged. I've gotten jobs in fields that I never would have thought to apply for because even though I couldn't do the skill now, I would be able to do it soon. Same with hobbies. It's wild to get really good at something random and turn around and look at how far you've come. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. Everyone in the military. I've started applying it to learning guitar and piano lately. 2. Hit the right notes now. And worry about the timing later. Typing. I had to take it in HS and thought it was an absolute joke that it was a required class. It's been my best return on. Forced. Investment though. By far. 
I had a spelling test in elementary school. One of the words we had to spell was a lot, as in I have a lot of candy. Lo and behold it is revealed that a lot is actually two words, not one. It was a trick question. As I imagine many redditors can relate, I was incensed. How dare she tarnish my spelling test score with this deception. I was the angriest 7 yo in the world, and I never trusted Ms. Tosha again. In fact, I was so scarred by this betrayal that I've never been able to write the words a lot without thinking about the spelling test, and wouldn't you know it, in my whole life since that day I've never made the mistake of writing a lot instead of a lot. I would a lot less anger to that topic, if I were you. In college I had to take the class which trials in medieval and renaissance France because it was the only course that fulfilled a general education requirement that also fit in my schedule. The class felt like an unbelievable waste of time. Everything was working against it, it was an 100 person lecture, the professor lacked any charisma or presentation skills. Half of the class time was spent watching absolutely terrible films that illustrated one historical point or another, but I was paying for it so I slumped back in my chair and suffered through every lecture. If you had asked me coming out of college what was the dumbest course I took I would have pointed to this one, but now I honestly find myself sharing things I learned in that class a couple times a year. I have managed to impress some seriously accomplished people with a well-placed knowledgeable comment on medieval folklore or an explanation of the mechanics of witch hunts and it all came from that one class. I don't even work in the field I majored in so it turns out the things I learned in a class about French witches has been more useful to me than some of the stuff I spent hours closely poring over and committing to memory. I understand that, like I feel like I forgot a lot from some of my important classes. But I definitely tell anecdotes from history of American forests which was basically history of lumberjacking. Grammar. And just to practice the habit of checking my work in general. Everyone needs someone who knows how to write. And you'd be surprised how often someone will dismiss you out of hand due to simple errors on cover letters or resumes. The most surprisingly useful class I ever took was a class I took on a lark in college. Greek and Latin roots in English. I have lost count of how many times I have been able to deduce the meaning of words or phrases that otherwise would have been totally opaque to me. Yeah it doesn't help me build a deck the way geometry does, but it's done better for me than a large chunk of my other college classes. The Latin I took in high school comes in handy pretty often. The nuns would be proud. Essays. I hated essays up to about 10th grade and still even then but frick it is important to know how to make a claim and find solid evidence to back that up and provide a reasoning for why. Seems a lot of people don't know how to do that. How to fall properly. I was never the most athletic kid in school. Not the least but not the most. And I remember being bored out of my skull one middle school gym class about how to brace yourself for falls and other stuff like that. Then a couple of years after graduation I was working for a small company, very small, doing telecom work and found my ladder about to slip off the building while I was in the process of climbing it. As soon as I realized it was going down I dropped the item I was hauling up and bailed to the side so as to not get tangled up in the ladder. I fell approximately 20 featuring onto pavement, but thanks to that stupid gym class all I did was fracture my wrist. I fractured the heck out of it and didn't have full full use of it again until years later but I didn't land on my back or head or anything crazy like that. That's so interesting. I never heard of that kind of thing behind Torton Gym. Falling is so stupidly dangerous. It can be like your case where with some know-how and luck, you can fall 20 feet onto pavement and just mess up your wrist. Or it can be like you trip off a curb and smack your head and die. Latin. I took 3 years of it, and I was never particularly good at it. I hated languages at the time. My parents pressured me into doing the 3 language options at GCSE, which in my school was French, Spanish and Latin as an after school class, and I never saw the point of learning a dead language. Now I'll learn languages for fun, and it's nice to have a background in romance languages. There's a lot of though. This makes sense now, especially when it comes to things like noun cases. Who's got two thumbs and knows the difference between an ablative and a dative echi femina? Yes, dative came useful when learning German. Statistics. In particular, some basic concepts like mean versus median, statistical significance, confidence intervals, Bayes' theorem. 
Agreed. I use stats more than anything else in my field. I took drama throughout high school and although it hasn't landed me any acting gigs, yet, it did seriously bolster my acting abilities and to put on a convincing game face which has proved invaluable in making friends and connecting with people. The only drama I did was a 4th grade musical, but it taught me that if you do have to get up in front of people, you just go for it, and the audience will come along with you. Medicine, hear me out on this one, started out as a pre-medical student, but flunked calculus. Had to switch majors to history during sophomore year to save my academic scholarships. I thought I had wasted my time since the odds of using that level of medical training, basic anatomy, biology, and chemistry, were slim to none. My first job after getting my masters was in a history of medicine archive, parlayed that into working at a federal science agency, TL. Doctor owe my career to flunking calculus. Trigonometry. I was a biology major, and things like trig seemed pointless. Later on in life, I helped design experiments to measure perception, and I was asked to create a computer-based experiment that would move a distractor stimulus half the intrafovial angle, 0.7 degrees, when viewed from 25 centimeters. I thought WTF. Then, I was back in class from 20 years earlier and remembered that tan equals opposite adjacent, so it was actually quite easy, and I wrote a routine that automated things for the researchers. I ended up doing a lot of these. Sun Greek letter theta Greek letter theta for small Greek letter theta. Also tan Greek letter theta Sun Greek letter theta for small Greek letter theta. <laughs> Math. The whole subject shows you how to break down a problem and find a solution or solutions using different methods and various approaches. This isn't one that I ever thought would be useless for me since I went into a STEM field but it's nonetheless incredibly useful in my career. How to use the correct number of C's and S's to in spelling necessary. Learned it in third form biology. Never eat cake eat salmon sandwiches. I had a business teacher explain how important it is to check price tags on the shelf for the price per unit, to be sure you're getting the best value overall. I read those labels every time I'm in the store, like 10 years later. I've recently started doing this. Sometimes I'll spend more on a few pounds of something like chicken. It's just me and the SO. I can't justify buying 10 pounds of it for just us. Spanish. I'm a police officer in a very diverse community now, and it's extremely helpful. I don't look like I speak Spanish, so people talk in front of me as if I don't know what they are saying. They say incriminating things. They even plan out how they're going to assault me right in front of me. It's crazy, but most importantly I'm a greater service to my community. I can help people I ordinarily might not be able to. You're cool, I like you. I feel like typing is very appropriate here. I was pretty surprised to see how many people, including people who grew up on a computer and keyboard, still hunt and peck. I hunted and pecked despite being taught the home row method in kindergarten because I hated that method and couldn't do it effectively. Then I started playing multiplayer video games based on chat commands. Now my typing is rather normal. Basic computer literacy and troubleshooting. Bunch of technologically inept co-workers that can't even create their own email address. I had an accounting teacher in high school who used to say, if your outgo exceeds your income your upkeep will be your downfall. I have thought about that a lot over the years and really do think it has helped me to keep my financial life more balanced. Prerading. A guy used to be so annoyed by this. Why am I slowing down to read the headings when I can just plow through and finish my homework faster? Then, about 15 years later, I got to graduate school, and my professors there taught us. Prerading. I now teach it to my undergraduate students. You can get through dense text so much faster and remember so much more of it if you look before you leap rather than just plowing through from the beginning. What I tell my students now, read titles and headings, look over all tables and figures, and stop to imagine what the article will be able. Then, you may start reading. My chemistry teacher gave us a test at pretty much the start of the semester. One of the major rules in the classroom was that during a test there was no speaking, no looking around, no communicating. When you're finished with the test we were to sit quietly. So here we go on this test and I'm doing great probably. It was a read each question before answering kind of test. 
The recent unit we were reviewing was something about proper lab protocol to get us ready for actually doing lab work. Lots of easy questions like when do you put on safety glasses? The last question on the last page was, to score 100% on this test leave everything entirely blank. The most critical thing to remember is to always read instructions thoroughly from start to finish before beginning work on something. If you don't, you may miss something confusing later in the instructions and end up with a half finished thing which would be wasteful at best, dangerous at worst. I don't think anyone got 100% on it but that really stuck with me and there's been plenty of times I would have had issues in the middle of setting something up for stupid reasons if I hadn't read through it before I started. When I was in middle school, my teacher made us do a test quiz where you had to read the whole thing to get in 100. It would say to draw a square in the corner, then draw a circle in it, etc. Only a few students passed, but it taught us a good lesson. Maslow's hierarchy of needs helps so much in understanding another person's position or struggle, and in providing needed help to that person. The most useful thing I've gotten out of learning about Maslow's was that now I can reference it and look smarter as a result. Scientific method. Having a control and then other tests changing only one variable at a time. I'm not saying I always exercise the scientific method proper, but if I'm trying to test something out quick, I at least try to limit changes I make at one time so I can know a little more confidently what actually needed to change to work while limiting other unnecessary changes, especially helpful while debugging code. My high school drama teacher taught us the phonetic alphabet, actually used it in college speech classes, where it was also taught, but not as well. But today, when I meet someone have a student with a tricky name pronunciation, I write it down phonetically, and then I can always pronounce their name correctly. Geography. Man it feels good to be one of 50 Americans who knows anything about any other country besides America. I take pride in that. My multiple geography classes through high school and college have helped my trivia team win tons of free beer over the years. I was a slacker in high school Spanish class, but amazingly enough, I gleaned a good amount so I can understand and say basic things. In college I took an intro developmental biology class where I had to learn about the development of a frog. I distinctly remember thinking, why should I care about how frogs develop why do I have to memorize this stupid chart? And then I did a PhD on Xenopus heart development which catapulted me into my current job, human heart development. Log values. How to add and multiply, etc. I work in microbiology and now use them every day. Also, how to organize my writing. Making sure it's clearly organized and not a jumbled mess of ranting and raving. Finally, and most importantly, how to pull my foreskin back so that my pea shoots further up the wall. The benefits of this speak for itself. Imho. Showing your work or providing reasoning for why you made a certain decision. This always seemed remedial but it was a guaranteed way to get partial marks on a test regardless on if you ended up with the correct answer. I find in the working world this also applies, that as long as you can provide justification on why you chose to do something a certain way, your decision will hold more water than if you provided none. Medicare vs Medicaid, we care for the elderly, and we aid the poor. Now that I've been doing research on healthcare reform, I have to remind myself of that saying almost daily. Not learned in a classroom per se, there is no point losing your temper, the opposing party gets an auto win and you look silly. Stay calm, say something placid and then stay quiet. I've used this at work many times and have gotten recognized and promoted for my ability to handle volatile situations. Truth, I hate everyone and I think they are all idiots. My high school physical conditioning class was probably the most practical class I ever took. The teacher taught us how to form a healthy exercise routine and diet, how to safely do exercises, how to safely lift heavy objects, which is by far the most useful thing. ETC and I went from a chubby freshman to a slim and trim senior and held on to that six pack until I got way too into beer in college. I'm still in pretty good shape but I've got a really persistent gut but he's not too bad and it's all because of that one lady. Turns out she used to party with seniors though and was fired like the year after I took it. How to cope with being bored and how to do something that feels utterly pointless. People can bang on about making education more engaging and relevant. 
But these two skills make such a difference in life and school teaches them well. Typing class. I remember taking it as an easy A elective back in 1999 not realizing how much my everyday life would count on it as an adult. Watching people hunt and peck drives me insane. I know exactly what you mean. Was going to write this, but I usually read a few comments before. I honestly think my most useful class was English. Aside from the grammar stuff, I really think my English classes, especially the books we read, taught me about empathy and humanity and things like that. Perhaps not the most practical skills, but still important. It's been studied and proven that frequent readers are more emphatic than the average person. I don't know what study it was. My professor read it not me. Math. All of it. You go around thinking all this stuff might be interesting on its own but it's useless. But if you want to do anything professionally relevant to science, economics, even social science in any quantitative way, you need to really be able to understand a lot of math and the way it works. Particularly algebra in a lot of cases. I took a lot of advanced math in high school just to make myself look smart to get into a better college. But holy crap am I glad I did. I became a biologist I need that stuff all the time. Yes, like even calculating tips at restaurants, which isn't crazy math, but still is math. Or if you're involved with any sort of business in adulthood, you're going to have to work with numbers on some level, probably. Using context clues to guess what a word you don't know means. It's amazing. And since there are tens of thousands of words in most languages with a literary tradition, you really don't have time to look up every single new word. It's good for expanding your vocab in your native language. And it's also useful when you're reading something in a second language that you're not completely fluent in yet. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. I can't even begin to tell you how many times this knowledge has gotten me out of a bind. In kindergarten I learned how to remember how many days there are in a month by using the peaks and valleys of my knuckles. Each knuckle is 31 days and each valley is 30 days or February, 28 stroke 29. Put your hands together palms down and thumb to thumb. Starting at the knuckle from your left hand's pinky, left pinky is January, 31 days. First valley is February, 28 stroke 29 days. Left ring finger is March, 31. Second valley is April, 30. Left middle finger is May, 31. Third valley is June, 30. Left index finger is July, 31. Right index finger is August, 31. Fourth valley is September, 30. Right middle finger is October, 31. Fifth valley is November 30. Right ring finger is December, 31. Thank you for explaining this in detail. No one ever taught it to me and I wasn't sure how it was done. Computer literacy. Understanding how applications work, are supposed to work, and basic troubleshooting. Restart the application device. You get this from basic computer classes in high school college. Sometimes typing classes. I'm a software tester, so a lot of my day is spent making sure applications work with the end user in mind. 40 plus YO that is barely computer literate and needs this application to perform their daily work tasks. Also, I'm able to help family and friends that aren't as computer savvy understand computers devices. Except my mom. She will never understand. She needs a jitterbug that can send receive phone calls, texts, and view photos and videos of our family. Everything else is way too complicated. In my ITGCSE, we had a 4 week block on how to use spreadsheets. You try explaining y equals sum, is important to know to a bunch of 14 year olds and see how far that gets you. Now I build spreadsheets for pretty much everything not even as part of an office job. I have strong feelings on index match versus vlookup. I am the queen of the conditional format. I have a special spreadsheet that tracks my productivity per day, and spits out data visualizations for every question I could possibly ask about how my work is going. Usually not well, because I spend too much time making spreadsheets. Psychology. Took it as an elective because it sounded fun to study crazy people. I haven't stopped studying crazy people since. In my spare time, they are all around. Out of college, 
signed up accidentally for logical philosophy instead of philosophy. Turns out it was something like a mathematical argument structuring course. I vehemently hated that class every time I attended. But it's been the most useful. I not only prepare better arguments in personal life, I prepare better business cases at work. And well don't you know it, Excel functions are fundamentally the same. I took a class by mistake and turns out I use it every day in my job. History. Knowing history enables you to understand current events and probable outcomes. It also gives a hint what to expect, because, sorry cliche, history tends to repeat itself. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.